Okay, we're back at Victor Nipper Stadium. We stepped out for a moment while they did the national anthem. And as I mentioned before, folks, just so you know, tonight we're going to do a little bit different with the camera because of our camera angles. We're going to have to uh, probably handhold it all the way through the game. So just bear with us. We're hopefully we're going to get you some good shots and, uh, of course, some good action to see. What we were talking about, Jacob, right before we stepped out, Josh Armstrong. And I'm going to – you take this. 142 tackles, Joe Hall, <laughs> that's school record. And that is a great total. After seven games, Josh Armstrong has 126 tackles. Now, I did the math and got Rev to also do it, and I believe he'll agree with me. That is 18, I believe, tackles a game average. 18, folks. How does he do it, Jake? I, I wish I could really tell you because that's that's unheard of. 126 tackles through seven games. He has tonight and next week. So if the record doesn't fall tonight, you, you have to think it will next week, and then he'll just keep adding to it. But he plays assignment football, and you have to give credit to the guys up front on the defensive line, being in position. You know, granted their their names aren't getting called all the time because you know they're they're being blocked or they're in position or they're you know, making a play based on what the offensive line gives them. Right. And then there's Josh Armstrong in the hole. But not just in between the tackles. We noticed in Spring Hill, I believe it was two weeks ago, Spring Hill tried to run outside a couple of times. And I can't tell you the last time a Dragon team was, you know, allowed <laughs> allowed people to, you know, run outside, run outside of the hashes against them. And, you know, when they take off outside, there's usually one number that's leading the way, and it's number four. And he's and he's he's having a great year. But uh, I believe I know the young man. I coached him when he was in the seventh grade during my senior year. And if you were to ask him, he'll tell you that uh, the record's nice, and yes, it'd be nice to have, but anything less than you know playing for it all in December would you know wouldn't be reaching the ultimate goal and absolutely Josh watching him last week there was a couple of plays you know from his linebacker position that went away from him completely and we're trying of course Woodlawn uh, everybody remembers we talked about the turtle offense all the players bunched in there and we're waiting for to see who's coming off the bottom of the pile and who's got the tackle and you're all at once you look and here number four is getting up and then you look and number four is getting up it's over and over and over i have not seen a junk city player and we've seen some great ones believe me folks yes. that flies to the ball the way he does it, it is unbelievable and 126 tackles you can't talk enough about it but there's really nothing else you can say yeah. except he has a chance tonight like you said to get it if not by the an end of the regular yeah average an average <laughs> night for josh folks and he is the school's single season tackle leader <laughs> an average night school receiving records uh, i guess you could say are kind of in jeopardy <laughs> robert armstrong and randy cole from the 80s hold most of the school's receiving records Two guys that are closing in, and I know this sounds crazy, but we don't have the complete numbers as far as Randy and Robert, so we kind of been holding up. And talked to Coach Carpenter, and he said, "Well, we'll just we'll wait another week, and we're going to verify a few more things to be sure." But two guys that are closing in on it is Jarkel Brown and Jamario Bell. Jarkel, career 31 receptions, 658 yards, 12 touchdowns. Jamario Bell, 28 receptions, 428 yards, nine touchdowns. Talk about those two guys a little bit and what they mean to the offense. Well, as we were talking about earlier with, let me find the number here, uh, 12 different Dragons have caught a pass this season. Yes, those two are the names that you hear. And, uh, of course, it's a product of the system, you know, changing over to the spread offense last year. And uh, the guys, they run they run very good routes, but also they, they just they – just, they have they had that mismatch factor about him. Of course, Bell, you know he stands tall. He stands above most most people on the football field, and then with the big hands, he can bring down just about anything. And then you look at Jarkel with his speed and just pure athleticism, that that contributes to the to the numbers he's posted throughout his career. And then but then you look at the other guys, the guys that we're talking about game planning for in the future. You know, play a uh, playoff opponents looking at junction film early to try to get a you know a beat on them. And you see Jark Hill and you see Jamario. Okay, what do we got to do to stop these guys? You know, do we do we play a corner on them and then a safety over the top? That's fine and dandy, but then what about the other ten Dragons that have caught a pass? I mean, just weapons all over the field, speed, depth. 
can't stop it you can only contain it and, and to have those two in the offense is two that you have to key on you cannot just go okay we're going to shut bail down and then, well, no, we got to shut Brown down. Well, don't forget, folks, and it's a game time decision. Junction's offense could have Dancy and Hayes back. And by no means, not being uh, callous about it or nothing, they have not been missed the last two weeks. When you look at all the weapons Junction City has, and this team is really not clicking yet, offensively or defensively, you know, we talked about the mistakes. When Coach Cartman, it seems it never fails. At some point during the season, his teams get to clicking, get to rolling like they should. It's going to be scary to see what these guys could do. It sure will. I, I mean, you look at it, you know, the depth that they have and the experience that the younger guys get in these games, you know, the pick your score games, the experience they get on the field. It's just uh, not only this year, but, you know next couple of years. Yes, this is still predominantly a sophomore junior team with a very good from the way everybody talks, ninth grade group coming up and uh, next week we'll be getting into some of that because uh, the freshmen should be coming up and I hope I'm not jumping the gun, but usually the plan is as soon as they're through with the junior high season the uh, freshmen come on up and there's a couple names there we'll talk about. Right now let's look at the standings and then we'll get ready for uh, game time. The AAA conference race right now, of course, the Dragons run the show. 5-0 and in conference play, 7-0 and overall. Bearden rising and a big game tonight, I believe, in Cleveland County. The Cats and Bears will be getting it on. Bearden 4-1, 5-1 overall. Or, yes, 5-1. Rising 3-1, and 5-2 and overall. The winner of that game, the 2C. Now, very important, of course, to get the 2C, but keep this in mind. If Junction City should advance, and we studied this the other night, if they advance to the semis, chances are they will be seeing the third seed from the AAA conference. Could you imagine Bearden or Rising coming to Junction City with a trip to Little Rock on the line? On the line. Holy Moses, folks, that's all <laughs> I can tell you. Strong is four, three and one. The Bulldogs still got some bar in them. Five and two overall. They could make some noise and do something. Could end up with a third seed themselves, depending on how things go. Here comes Parker's Chapel. They're fifth, two and three, two and five. The Trojans need a conference victory, of course, either tonight or next week. And I'm not sure. Uh, I know our season ends next week as far as regular season. I don't know who they have. At, I believe theirs finishes up to or they go out of conference the last week. Trojans need one more victory to get in the playoffs. Woodline still got still making a little noise. One and three, one and four. Hermitage and Hampton. Hermitage 0 and 4, 1 and 5, Hampton 0 and 5, 1 and 6. And the nicest thing you can say there is basketball seasons is not too far off. Okay, we will be doing trivia. Rev has given me the signal that it's about time for the teams to take the field. We're going to stay here with you and let Mr. Uh, Derek, do you need me to get the camera for you or can you make it up? And we're going to go ahead and get ready for the game. The Dr Dragons getting ready to take the field. And Parkers Chapel, of course, folks. For the Dragons, number five, Josh Larry. Will be coming out over there. Victor Nipper Stadium, their home field, of course. The Trojans have been playing football as far as uh, AAA, I believe, since 2005. 2006 was the first year the Dragons and Trojans met. Junction City won that game 68 to 8. 2007, the Dragons won 68 to nothing. They didn't play in 2008, or excuse me, 2007 was 68 nothing. 2008, 2009, Junk City and uh, Parks Chapel did not play. I believe the Trojans were in 3A at the time. 2010, they got back together. Junk City won at 56 26. And if y'all remember, I believe it was Rodney Larry, 240 yards rushing, five touchdowns in that game. 2011, the Dragons won 42 13. And last year, Junk City won 62 12. You are watching Junction City Football on the Dragon Sports Network, sponsored by our title sponsor, Elder Rate of Chemical. We are thrilled to have them as our title sponsor, bringing you all the exciting action of Junction City Football. The captains, Jacob, can you get the numbers there? The captains uh, are meeting see. right now and the referee talking to them. Uh, number five is Josh Larry. We will kick. And number nine, Robert Armstrong with the captains. And you said we will kick? Yes. All right.
Junction City Florist, Steve and Sharon Williams. Get my papers here in order, folks. Junction City Pharmacy, McDonald's Grocery, the Accident Injury and Injury Center in South Arkansas, Hogwild Pest Control, some of the fine sponsors of the Dragon Sports Network. We're thrilled to have them. Also, some more, Three Creeks Baptist Church, their youth ministry and the church also. Sponsors of the Dragon Sports Network, STI Sims, First Financial Bank. And don't forget, shout outs. We want to know where you're tuning in from. Let us Please know. post to the JC Schools Facebook page on the DSN status. And I'd like to throw this in real quick. I believe I forgot it last week, but I will do it for sure. I'll do it again. Remind me. All right. Uh, this broadcast is exclusive property of the Dragon Sports Network. The express written approval of the Dragon Sports Network or the Junction City District is required for the rebroadcast of any or all parts of the program. And we are about, what, Rev? Uh, they got it ready. They got the 12 minutes up there. And now the Dragons waiting on them. Parks Chapel's already got the kickoff team out there. And there <laughs> we go. Ready to go. And the Dragons take the field. <laughs> Junction City, 7 and 0 in the year, 5 and 0 in conference play. 21 consecutive wins, 21 consecutive conference wins. Once again, they put that streak on the line tonight. And I don't know about you, Jacob, but I'm ready for them to Tee it put the old yes, skin in there and let's get it going. Got a cool crisp in the air. As I mentioned earlier, the grass is starting to turn. And uh, I mean, this is part of the year where every game Every game means something, and you're you're playing for the next week. Okay, back deep for Junction City. Should be. Let's see who I was taking the field here. Kicking off. And I am looking and see. I see. Okay, where are you kicking? That's right. I'm sorry. Back deep for Parker's Chapel. Let me get their roster and look here. Number 15, John Tyson. That's what they have listed, but that is not him. Number 25. That is Gill. It is a kind of cross kick. Tyson does get it and is going to be upended at about the 34 yard line, and that's where Parks Chapel go to work first and 10. So Parks Chapel goes to work first and 10. From there, they're going to mark it back at the 32-yard line. And some of the guys we talked about, one of them definitely to keep an eye on folks on that offensive line of theirs, number 72, Will Jones. Like Jacob said, 6'6", 305. And he does stand out. Cannot miss him. <laughs> and another big boy there at center. Let's see if we can get some of the names here in the, or get, get their numbers and we'll give you their names. All right, first and 10. Here's a give to number 22 for Chapel and he is wrapped up immediately by about three or four Dragons on the tackle number nine, Robert Armstrong, number seven, Keandre Evans and number six, I believe that is Rogers on the tackle. T formation right there for the for the Trojans to start the game. This Dragon defense has seen numerous formations <laughs> throughout the year from the wishbone to the veer to the to the spread to now the T formation and they're back in it back in it again another big guy on that line from John Powell number 71 it's going to be a second let's call it a long nine for the Trojans Tyson gets uh, the snap to go straight ahead he will pick up about two yards a yard and a half something like that on the tackle Number four, and Mr. Armstrong bringing them down at about the 35-yard line. So we call it third and seven, just underway here at Victor Nipper Stadium in Parker's Chapel. Junction City trying to force a three and out and get the ball back and try to get some points on the board. Here we go, snap to Tyson. Tyson rolls out looking. He has got a heavy rush coming on him. 
The pass is incomplete. He did not have any. He rolled out and had about he three or four sure dragons didn't. on him immediately. Like design blitz right there by the dragons. Armstrong with some pressure, and then I believe that was Bell on the far side uh, coming up field also. And uh, Tyson, Tyson had to get rid of it uh, very quickly. So it brings up a fourth and seven. And Junction City, that's what I was looking for a while ago, folks. I jumped the gun. Number three is, is in the game. Jaquise Dancy waiting the punt. He's been out the last two weeks recovering. Here's a snap. Good snap. Tyson kicks it away from him. Good punt by Tyson. And a decent bounce there. It's going to go out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it. Uh, Pretty good 36. punt. Kind of directional. He made sure Dancy would not get it. 26-yard line, I believe. Yes, okay. So first and 10, Junction City from the 26-yard line. The Dragons. Randall Holyfield stepping into the huddle. Bo Hux, Jamario Bell also joining them. And Jarkel Brown. So the Dragons immediately bringing some Sailor Wilson also in there. They split one out to our side and twins to the far side. Holyfield, I believe that is Dancy beside him. Gives to Dancy. Dancy trying to get outside will pick up about a yard. And it'll be second and nine. So kind of letting Jaquise kind of get the rust off there. Yeah, get, get back into the swing of things. The Dragons had twins to the, I guess, the far side of the field, uh, the top of your screen at home. But to the, which would be the short side, and they run it to the run it to the to the big side of the field, but uh, not much running room right there. So it brings up a second. We'll call it nine from the 27-yard line. Holyfield drops back, looking, looking, throws. He's got a man open. That is Jarkel Brown. Brown is past midfield to about the 47 of Chapel. A pickup of 26 yards on the play, first down. And what you was talking about, Jacob, you key on one. There's others out there. One of the uh, one of the plays we've seen Junction run several times this year is the you know the double twin set. This time to the to closest to your screen, bottom of your screen. Uh, the far receiver run the curl route, and the corner bit on it, and the uh, the fade from the inside receiver was there and Brown made a good job hauling it in. And it'll be a first and 10 from the 47 yard line. Waiting on the chain gang to get everything set. Dancy lined up beside Holyfield. Holyfield in the gun now. We got a whistle. And let's see what we have. I did not see a flag. I don't mean one might not have got thrown. They were just, re I guess, I don't, no believe, play. I don't believe the officials were ready for the for the ball to be snapped. That's what it was. Okay, here we go now. Holyfield back looking. He's got a little bit of pressure on him. Holyfield wanting to throw. Now he's going to run. Now he throws. And I, that's, yeah, I yeah, to say it's going to I hate to say it, but he was past the line of scrimmage. Yeah, He'd been legal it was easy to save him up here. Been better <laughs> off running. Yeah. <laughs> So let's see what the Trojans do. I believe they can decline if they want to. It would bring up a second and 10. And that is the call against the Dragons. He was past the line of scrimmage. But as a coach, you got to admire him sticking to pass first, you know, next to run. Now, granted, you know, in film, in film, you know, on Monday, you know, hey, tuck that thing and, and get as much as you, as get as much as you can. But you you do have to admire him for for trying to uh, keep his options open downfield. Well, as they would say down at the uh, Outlaw Stadium in South Caledonia, he had some pasture in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> he could have picked up several <laughs> yards. All right, here we go. It'll be second and let's call it 13. The gives to Dancy. Dancy breaking a couple tackles, still on his feet. Finally goes down after picking up about we'll call it four yards there. It will be a third and nine. Hard at the Trojan 46-yard line. Hard running right there by Dancy. You'd like to see that. Uh, he did pick up about three yards. And let's call it a third and nine from the Trojan 46. And it's good to see him. They're getting Dancy into the flow of things, kind of like we talked yes. about a while ago, get the rust off and get him rolling. Dragons got twins split to our side of the field. Holyfield throws as Bo Hooks. Bo Hooks with the reception will get about a yard and it's going to bring up fourth down. It worked earlier in the drive, but the Trojans were not fooled 
on the uh, little screen screen route right there. So no gain on the play. Be fourth. Well, yeah, no gain. Fourth down and nine. Let's see what the Dragons do. And I do not see any sign of punt here. It looks like we're going for it. Yeah. Junction City will go for it on fourth and nine. Armstrong lined up beside Holyfield. Holyfield on the snap, drops back. He's looking downfield. The rush is on him. He breaks a tackle. He's not going anywhere else, and he will be brought down. And a big stop for Parker's Chapel. That is definitely a big stop. We, you know, we talk about needing to win one of these next two games, and that is the way you want to see your bunch come out if you're, if you're the coaching staff for the Trojans. Defensive line getting a lot of pressure on Holyfield on Holyfield early, he, you know, he, he was still looking for his targets downfield, and when he decided to run, he had nowhere to go. And you see there also, Woodlawn gave Junction some trouble early on in their game with last week, especially on the defensive line, and the same thing here. All right, low snap, but a give to, let's see, that is number 21, I believe, for Parker's Chapel. Ty Edwards, it'll be a pickup of about a yard on the play, be second and nine. But what I was talking about, Jacob, the, the Trojans with that size, putting pressure on the Genesee offensive line to keep them out. And the last, about the last three out of four plays, they have been in the backfield pretty quick. Yes. So it'll be second and about a nine and a half again to give to Edwards. He gets off tackle and he got some running room and will pick up about six yards on that play. Yeah, the Trojans right now are doing a good job of spacing the Dragons out. They're, you know, they started out, in, as we mentioned, the T formation. And, you know, now they're in the shotgun, you know, spreading receivers out. And I'm sure the offensive linemen have a, a couple bigger splits. And right now it's, it's working for them, you know, and they're in a convertible uh, third down right now. All right, we got another run here to the outside. And uh, see who got it. I believe that is going to be... Not sure, but I think it was Edwards again. And a nice pickup of about there see where they a, mark it. There is a flag on the on the play. Yep, they're huddling there to talk it over. If the play stands, I believe he's got a first I down. I believe he does. Well, let's see what we got. The officials getting ready to get the signal. It's declined. First down, Parkus Chapel. So the Trojans, on their second possession, have got a little something going. Tyson in the gun. And he's going to keep it straight ahead here, looking for a little running room. who will pick up a couple yards. Still on his feet, battling. The Dragons will wrap him up and bring him down at about the, let's see, what a mark, about the 40, inside the 40, about the 30. 38-yard line, make it the 37-yard line. So it will be second and six for the Trojans. They got a nice little drive going here. Tyson, a load to handle, gives to Edwards. Edwards looking for some running room, and this time the Dragon defense is there, leading the way. Taylor Mason along with Josh Armstrong. And that will be no gain on that play. Bring up a third. And we'll call it a third and a short six for the Trojans. Still in the first quarter here. Six minutes, 24 seconds. No score. Tyson looking over the defense. Looks to the sideline to Coach Housden to get the signal. The Trojans using those. right. You can tell folks using those armbands to see what play. Tyson will roll out, looking, looking, looking downfield. He's got Bale coming after him. Now he'll throw it up. It's going to be knocked down. Nice play. And you talk about some speed there. Jacob, something you talked about both sides of the ball. We mentioned it all year long. Come into play then. Nice, nice play right there to knock it down. Uh, Tyson threw into double coverage because I believe Mitchell was – on the back side of the uh, of the wide receiver and threw in a double but he had a lot of time to throw once he once he got outside of the pocket he did and bale was coming after him and got blocked out and he had time to sit up and take a shot downfield okay the trojans facing a fourth down let's see what they do here's a snap here's the kick oh. uh, it's going to be a wobbly one that goes out at about the 20 21 yard line about a, I almost call that block. what, 16, 15 yard, almost blocked. 
He's trying to directional punt away from yes, whoever is. we have back. And I, as you notice, they, they shift right there before the snap on the punt to to where the snapper is the last guy on the line of scrimmage. And, you know, that sets up for a, a fake opportunity for you Razorback fans out there. Y'all might remember the, the fake that they ran on their – uh, on a punt against Ar uh, excuse me against Rutgers earlier yes. in the year and it that you know worked to a charm so that's something to, something to look for it's something to keep an eye on too they may try it again all right Holyfield gives to Dancy Dancy cuts into the hole now breaks the tackle Dancy on his feet gets about Dancy carries for the I'd say about what Jacob nine on that one he had a good game nice run very near a first down, and that's the way you like to see a drive get started on first down. A big gainer, and that sets up a number of opportunities yes, here. Yes, it does. He gets his confidence back for once. You know, he had, hasn't been played in a couple of weeks, and, you know, it gets him going and gets him into the into the swing of the game. Twins set to the dragon side of the field. Holyfield drops back, looking, looking. Got a man breaking down the field. That is Jarkel Brown. He's got the nice reception move. at the 39. Spins out of a tackle and goes to the 36-yard line. And a first down and a flag comes in flag at the very the end. That might, be a, that might be a face mask. I believe so, but my luck with officials this year, I'm going to wait and see. <laughs> Uh, a nice ball right there by by Holyfield. By Holyfield. Nice throw. <laughs> Got his name there for it. Yeah, very nice, very nice ball. And then Brown, you know, as sure-handed as he is, and almost <laughs> made a move to get out of it. <laughs> yeah, but, but a great job to secure it nonetheless. I thought for a second when he made that spin, I'm like, watch out, he's gonna be gone. <laughs> Add five yards to that. It's at the 31 yard line. It'll be first and ten for Junction City with 5.07 to go in the first quarter. Holyfield back again looking. He's taking a shot downfield. He's got Sutter Wilson, oh. and we got a flag down, and that may be uh, – I'd call it what's old face garden. Let's see what we're going to have. Great coverage for the Trojans. Yeah, good job by there. Yes. By the uh, corner, number seven, but that's Kate, uh, Kate's. Uh, good coverage right there to knock the ball away right there at the last, at the last second. And we had a flag. They waved, I guess, waved it off. So it'll be second and 10 from the 31 yard line. Holyfield in the gun. Dancy beside him. The give to Dancy. Dancy gets to the outside to 30. Dancy makes a cut to the 25. Dancy makes another cut. Still oh on his feet. My. Steps out of a tackle at the 20. <laughs> Dancy at the 15. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Moses. He's heading for the end zone and he is in. Touchdown, oh. Junction City. And Mr. Dancy. Put that on the highlight reel, folks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> During that run, I was thinking of a one similar that Josh Armstrong had against Spring Hill two weeks ago, and I said that's probably one of the best runs you'll see all year. And I think that may have lasted two weeks because – he was bottled up two or three times, Had, a, had was wrapped up a couple of more times, and then just <laughs> found the end zone. <laughs> I mean, I like to step out. I mean, he just stepped right out of a tackle and yeah. kept going. Uh, Jarkel Brown on for the extra point. Will Smith, the holder. Good snap, balls down, kicks up. And it is good. So... Four minutes, 48 seconds left in the first quarter. The Dragons draw first blood. Our score, Junction City 7, Parkers Chapel nothing. And the Dragons, a 79-yard drive to take the lead. And that's what you want to see, especially after Parkers Chapel had some things going their way pretty fast. And the Dragons, that offense coming out. And what you mentioned in the pregame, Jacob, Plenty of weapons to choose from. And the, the balance the balance of the offense was seen right there during that drive. The Dancy run was set up by the 32-yard completion from uh, Holyfield to Jarkel Brown. And Brown almost scored on that play, but he but was taken down, and Dancy, Dancy took it from there. Okay. Mr. Brown cross kicks it. It's going to be taken by number 21, Edwards. He heads upfield and is hit at about the 34, 33-yard line, and that's where the Trojan offense will go to work. First and ten. So now, what do you want to see out of that Dragon defense? Uh, 
in the first drive, or I guess it would be the second, their, yeah, their first drive of the game, you know, in the T formation, T formation, T formation, and then they started uh, audible into different formations, and it kind of left the Dragons kind of running around trying to get lined up, and you want to be able to see, you want to see them, you know, locking in, getting focused, and uh, still still staying true to their assignment regardless of, uh, you know, the the formation that Parker Chapel comes out in. And one thing I hope and we can see is that the Dragon, de especially defense line, start taking control of the line of scrimmage yes. here. Tr Trojans have got some beef on that line, folks. All right, now they go under center with Tyson. Here's a give to 22. I believe that is Gill, and he is hammered hard by guess who? Number four. four. Keandre Evans also in on the tackle coming up from his, uh, I believe, his safety position. And that will be a gain of about one, we'll call it two yards there. So second and eight. 420 left to go in the first quarter. Junction City just took the lead on a beautiful run by Jaquise Dancy. Okay, the Trojans again. Tyson will go under center. Full house backfield. He's got Edwards, and I don't I have a number, let's see, 22. He's going to be swam down. As I looked uh, up, J uh, Jamario Bale. Yeah, I believe that was a that was a busted play I right there. I believe so. Josh Larry also uh, in on the tag. A couple of guys. And Owens. A couple of guys looked out of position uh, as, far for the, as far as the Parker Chapel offense. Uh, a little miscommunication right there. It's going to cost them right here. Yeah, it's going to cost them dearly. Let's see, they had two-yard gain on, on first down, so it will be about an eight, nine-yard loss there total for the Trojans, and they face a third, and let's call it about 18. Tyson drops back, but he does not have time and is swarmed under by the Dragon defense. And it will be another loss of about three or four yards. Bell on on tackle also getting in there was will smith and it will bring up fourth down and let's call it about 20 22 yards for the trojans and safe to say they that's, will punt here yes that's what you wanted to see from your from your defense all right tyson puts his foot into it drives it it's going to take a junction city bounce and go down at about the 40 Seven yard line of Parker's Chapel. Great field position. And a great opportunity here for the Dragons to roll again. And the defense did what you wanted, kind of yes. took care of business. Parker's Chapel made a couple mistakes there and they made them pay See for them it. Flying to the football, definitely. And Josh Armstrong again, some beautiful tackles there. Uh, Josh already with five tackles tonight. All right, Holyfield gives two. Let's see, that is number two, Jarkel Brown. He's weaving and diving and bobbing, and he will pick up about five <laughs> yards. <laughs> Look like a water bug here. I mean, just zooming all around the place. It should have had him for no gain, and he ends up picking up five yards. So it will be second and five at the 42. Brown was lined up. The far side of the field, and they brought him in motion, snapped it to him, and uh, you know, handed it off to him. And we, we talk about you know, his being a good route runner, a good pass catcher, and then you see him right there, gain five right there on the just a little, just a little gift play. He is a handful to deal with, especially on a pass route, any type of route there. All right, here's a snap. It goes straight to Jaquise Dancy, and Dancy's on the loose again, folks, at the 20, 15, 10, 5. Jaquise Dancy, touchdown. touchdown. Wow. 42 yards just like it. A direct snap right to him, and needless to say, he did the rest. Yeah, he uh, did. A, a stop on a dime, and uh, I'll leave you some change. I mean, just. And then again, another, you talked about the weapons and stuff and everything. Direct snap to Dancy. You got Holyfield there in the gun, Dancy beside him. You got these receivers, Brown out, split out, yeah. Bale, all of them. A direct snap to Dancy. Dancy and he, yeah. There you are. <laughs> hey, so Junction City now up 13 to nothing, 149 to go in the first quarter. Brown getting ready for the uh, PAT. Snap, a little wobbly. Smith gets it down beautifully, and Brown puts it through the uprights. And our new score now, Junction City 14, Parkus Chapel nothing. 
And the Dragons starting to take control here, like we had kind of talked about. You want to take care of business and get things in order, and they're doing it. Okay. Need to talk about some sponsors here. Let's start with our title sponsor, Elder Rata Chemical. Proud to have them on board. They're bringing you this coverage of Junction City football on the Dragon Sports Network. Our title sponsor, Elder Rata Chemical. Junction City Floors, Steve and Sharon Williams. Any kind of floral needs, gifts for the there wife, is. girlfriend, whatever, go see them. All right, Brown ready to kick it off. Again, a cross kick, puts it up pretty high. It's going to be fair count at the about the 30-yard line, and that's where the Trojans will go to work. Mr. Edwards fair catching it at the right on the 30. And that was a, a very wise decision by Mr. Edwards to fair catch it. Brown got a got excellent height on that football on that corner kick. And, yes, he uh, did. The Dragon kick, kick team was flying down the field, and that – <laughs> Needless to say, that was a very smart decision to yes. fair catch it. And I believe we're going to want to re-kick. We're going to re-kick. There was a flag down, and let's see. They're calling all, all sides, sides on the dragon. So line it up, and let's kick it again, folks. And while we're waiting on that, let's talk about the hometown pharmacy in Junction City and GIF headquarters, and that is Junction City Pharmacy. Mr. Leon and Miss Sherry Hines. A lot of gifts to choose from. Any pharmaceutical needs you got, go see Mr. Leon Hines at Junction City Pharmacy. McDonald's Grocery, Mr. Red Henry. Glad to have them on board as a sponsor. All right, here we go. Brown's going to do it again. Get some height on this one again. Puts it back a little further, and Gill's going to take it. He's sprinting across the field, trying to get some running room, and is Ooh. hammered at about the 20 Excuse me, at about the 32-yard line. Did you see who got the line? I'm not sure of the number. <laughs> I saw a blur. I believe it was, was it 25? Pervante Avery hammered the Trojan runner at about the 30, let's call it the 33-yard line. So that's where Parks Chapel go to work first and 10 from the 33. 141 to go in the first quarter. Junction City up 14 to zip on a pair of touchdown runs by Mr. Dancy. All right, here's a give to Edwards. He splits into the middle and is going to be pushed back at about the 35-yard line by about three or four Dragons. And guess who? Number four, Josh Armstrong leading the way <laughs> along with – I believe that was number nine, Robert Armstrong. As you mentioned, as you mentioned earlier, we were talking about we'd like to see the defensive line start to not only the dragon defensive line but the offensive line too start to start, start to win the battles in the trenches. And uh, so far, the defensive line starting to starting to catch up with what the Trojans are doing offensively. And uh, you know, it's showing, especially on that last drive. You know, where they had them, I think, fourth and twenty. Yes, and, and here again, you see the Dragons doing the same thing. Tyson, direct snap, goes into the middle, will pick up about two yards. Taylor Mason in on the tackle. And it will bring up a third, and let's call it six for the Trojans. The Dragons doing what they need to do. And could like be, you could said, be setting Junction up for some kind of a you know trick play or some something they may not have seen based on just what they've been doing here so far. Now here's a direct snap to Tyson again. He runs hard. The young man is a hard yes, runner, is. tough to handle. He is close to the first down. Doesn't quite have it, I don't think. Taylor Mason, Josh Armstrong, and I believe Robert Armstrong on the tackle. He does not have it. It's going to be fourth, and let's call it. I was going to say one. Let's call it two yards. Fourth and two. You have for the Trojans, and what would you do here, Jack? Yeah, you have you have you have to go for it because right now you're down 14. They're going to take it to the quarter. That'll be the end of the first quarter. But yeah, you got you got to think that they're going to go for it now. You because you know right now, Dancy, welcome back. 86 yards on the ground, two <laughs> touchdowns. So far, you don't have an answer for him. So yeah, they, I'm sure they'll, they'll line up and try to go for it. Okay, while we're doing that, uh, tell us about a little banking business, Jacob. 
uh, one of our sponsors on the Dragon Sports Network, First Financial Bank, is uh, proud to support the broadcast of Junction City Athletics and their continued tradition of excellence. We're the only bank that's headquartered right here in Union County where our customers live and work. If you're looking for a new way to bank that rewards you, then check out our new Casasa accounts. Visit us on the web at ffb1.com to learn more or stop by any of our seven convenient Union County locations. Do you, Casasa? You should. First Financial Bank, member FDIC and equal housing lender. Great to have them on board as a sponsor of the Dragon Sports Network. If you're looking for a church home, Three Creeks Baptist Church, located 8772 Haynesville Highway, Jones City, Arkansas, Sunday morning. Sunday school starts at 9, worship at 10, Sunday evening. Women and men's discipleship training begins at 4.30, youth at 5, and Sunday evening worship at 6. On Wednesday nights, they had the meal at 5 with a WANA for kids, youth student ministry, and worship all at 6 o'clock. For more information, you can call 870-863-9407 or go on the web at threecreeksbaptist.com. And as always, Three Creeks Baptist Church, to all Dragon athletes and fans, have a safe and blessed weekend, and as always, go Dragons. Okay, we're ready to start the second quarter. The Trojans will punt it, and Mr. Tyson puts his foot into it and drives a good punt with a good roll. It'll go down to about the 15-yard line, and he flipped uh, the field. Yes, he did. As, <laughs> as we're saying, you know, I, I, I thought that they would, might, might go for it in a situation like that, but if you don't go for it, that's the, exactly the kind of punt that you want to have. I'm looking for our roster, Junk City roster is what I'm needing. Yes, we have one here somewhere. I was wanting to look over it a minute. Okay, from the 15-yard line, the Dragons will go to work. Tyson's punt covered about 40, I'm going to say about 45 yards. Here we go. All right, now I'm in business. All right, first and 10. Holyfield drops back, looks, throws. Bo Hux has got it at the 20. Good stiff arm of Bo, and he keeps on going down. to look at Bo Hux. What a, <laughs> what a beautiful play by Bo Hux. You, that off-season program just showed up and to They you. sure did. <laughs> we always, we're always talking about the uh, the sheer hands of uh, number 10 right there, but showing a little, uh, a little more athleticism right there after the catch. Uh, he probably carried the guy, probably carried the guy a good 15 yards. And that will give the Dragons a first down at about the 37-yard line. And on that play, a pickup of, what was it, about 22, 20 yards there. Like 22 yards. Holyfield in the gun, takes a snap, drops back again. He's looking downfield, throws. Jar oh, oh mm. through the hands of Jarkel Brown, who had beat his defender and was getting ready to make a move. Yes, he was. That was a very hard-thrown ball right there by Holyfield. You'd like to see that. Uh, putting a lot of... Putting a lot of fire behind his throws tonight. Very good spiral there too. Just just through the hands of Brown. He may he may not have ex expected it to come <laughs> come as fast as it, as it was coming. But it was it was moving. It, it was sure smoking. was. Second and ten from the 37 yard line. Holyfield looking over Trojan defense. He's got Evans lined up beside him. Wilson in motion. Holyfield drops back, looking downfield. Got a little time now. He puts it up. He's going almost. Oh, get it in or something. I'm not sure what he was trying to, he was, I believe, wanting to hook up with Jamario Bale, but put a little too much air under it, and like they almost got it intercepted. He, he, had, he had Bale underneath, and then he had Wilson, who they brought in motion right before the play, and I believe he run kind of a deep flag route, and he just kind of set it right there in between in between both receivers, but uh, a lot of time right there to throw. That's what you like to see as we, as we keep mentioning the, the Dragons uh, winning the battle in the trenches so far. And a good point there because uh, early on, the Dragons have a little bit of trouble with that beef on the Trojan line. Holyfield, oh, there's a mishandle there between him and Armstrong, and he wisely falls on it, bring up third, and well, actually be fourth down, excuse me, and it's gonna be about 16, 17 yards for a first down. And I'm pretty sure the Dragons here are going to punt it away. Yep, Jarkel Brown back in punt formation. And the Trojans, 14 to nothing, 11 7 going to second quarter. Opportunity to get back in. We got a flag down just as they snap it. And let's see what we got. It's going to be against the Dragons and back them up another, I believe, five yards. So it'll be fourth and 23. 
siege against the dragons. Jarkel Brown will be standing at about the 10 yard line waiting on this snap. Pretty good snap. He bobbles the ball and does the wise thing by just falling on it. The Trojans all over him. And Parker's Chapel gets a big break there. Definitely. It just uh, the snap was good. Very good snap. He just he just mishandled it. And uh, that's probably, as you said, that's probably the wisest thing he could have done. Just go ahead and fall on it and not, you know, try not to give up any points right here. You're going to see what the Dragon defense is made of right here. And you know what? A very good, good point and a very good test for Junction City right here. This game is, you know, it, Dragons got two touchdowns. They're up 14 nothing. But a touchdown here by Parks Chapel, and you yeah, got a brand right new ball game. They sure are. Okay, Tyson's in the gun, looking over the Dragon defense. He's got twins split out to the far side of the field. Direct snap to Tyson. He's going to go off tackle, looking for some running room. And the Dragons, I know number 10, Bo Huck's in there. I see Josh Armstrong, see Matthew Keandre Freeman. Evans, yes. And Keandre Evans, yes, sir. All on the tackle there. And, and let's see how much he got there. I'm stepping all over our camera, and I apologize. <laughs> About a three-yard gain. It's going to be second and seven for the Trojans. A big opportunity for Parker's Chapel here. Let's see what the Dragon defense can do. Second and seven, Tyson. Waiting on the snap, gets it, low snap, hands to bleed. That is to Edwards. Edwards, running off tackle, will pick up about a yard, I believe. And that will bring up third down, and let's call it, actually, I go, I'd go. i say no gain, really, about third and seven again. And they can get a first down without scoring. So the Dragons, and I think it's safe to say, Jacob, well, now they do have a good kicker, and we need to talk about her, and I, that's correct, folks, her. Kayla Wall. Yes. She is a very good kicker. Let's see what they decide to do, though, here on third and seven. Snap goes to Tyson. He runs outside, and the Dragon defense is there to greet him. Jamario Bell. And number 15 for the Dragons, Jay Mitchell, in on the tackle. It's fourth down, and let's call it fourth and five. And uh, they are going to kick here it. Right she here she comes. They are going to kick it. Oh, uh, you have to admire what the Dragon defense has done right here. You know, we don't know if they're, the Trojans will be able to get points. We'll, we'll see that coming up. But, you know, when they run the spread down there inside the red zone, it's really hard to defend. You, you're widening guys out, and you're having to account for everybody. Make it, They make the field big. And then, you know, they hand it off inside gives or, you know, sweet plays. And they do a good job of flying to the football and, uh, you know, making make some tackles. Yes, they did. We got a timeout now by Parker's Chapel to talk it over. And very good point, Jacob, the way the Dragon defense especially responded then, getting in, getting into the, I guess you could say the running lanes there and shutting it down. Because Mr. Tyson, as you mentioned before, he's a handful. Yes, he is. Uh, he's a very, he's a very hard-nosed runner, and then he has the size to go with it. And, uh, you know, as, as I was to hint on what I was saying earlier, you know, when they get down inside the red zone and they, they remain in the spread, you, get, you know, you got three to one side, two to two to the other, or three to one side and sing, a single set with a guy in the backfield. You kind of have to widen things out because if you don't account for them, then they will score. But then when they, you know, they do decide to hand it off for, uh, you know, short little runs, misdirections, gives, things like that, it, it makes it tough on the linebackers and the, and the D linemen to get in position. But the Dragons, good job right there. Well, let, let me put you on the spot. You agree with this decision? Kick it here. 11, uh, excuse me, nine minutes, three seconds. Do you agree? Kick it or would you go for it? Uh, they're going to go for it. Uh, okay, they, they brought her out. Now they brought. And they called timeout, and then now they're. Well, she started back out on the timeout, then she come out. They are going for it, Trojans. Here we go. Tyson drops back, looking, throws over the middle. It's intercepted. intercepted. Number 15, that is Mitchell. He is going to the 45. He's at midfield. He is heading to the house, ladies and gentlemen, with an escort to boot. He, Touchdown, Junction City. What yard line did he did he pick it out? Hey, at, that was in, at the one. That is the longest he, interception return in school history. 99 yards. Holy Moses, what a play. <laughs> He might, he might have got that in. There. It was hard to tell. He, he might, have, he might have took that out of the end zone. I'm, I'm That's not what sure. I, I was I'm trying. I'm not to... sure, but one thing's for sure. He come, he was coming across. He was at the one. Okay, wait. 99, 102. What does it matter? <laughs> Get the man some oxygen. 
<laughs> six points, yes. It's six points. Either way. Yes. <laughs> and a big, big play by the Dragon defense. Here comes Jarkel. He's waiting on him to get ready. Dragons in the old swinging gate. Now they're ready. Will Smith kneeling down for the hold. Here's a snap. Good snap. Ball's down. Kicks up. Count it. Our new score with 8.46 to go in the first half. Junction City 21, Parks Chapel 0. Talk about that momentum swing. Well, in, in high, you know, well, they say uh, hindsight's 20 20. You probably would like to take the three <laughs> points right there, and then Junction Junction turns it around on them and uh, goes, goes 99 for the pick six. And. I don't know if you felt it, but the momentum did did swing. Uh, when Mr. Mitchell come by here, <laughs> I felt the breeze and momentum going with him. <laughs> and, I mean, you, Coach Hounds, you, you know what he's trying to do. Yes, hey, I, I got to roll the dice. I got to roll the dice. Because, I mean, as we keep saying, there's no answer for Dancy right now. They can't seem to cover, cover Brown. Uh, the Dragon offensive line is, is giving Holyfield a substantial amount of time yes. to, to find his targets and to throw the ball, unlike the, their first two drives. And you, 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 have to, you have to go for it. You have to go for it you in that situation. we got a Dragon offsides on the kickoff, so they'll redo it. And you're right. I mean, if you get the three, it's 14-3. If you get the first down or you score, you're one score away from tying it up. Yes against the number one team in your conference, number one team in the state. One of the best teams in the state. state. Let's just say yes. you roll the dice and you, you got to stand with it. And, of course, people hear this and like, man, that's all they seem to talk about. There's that speed again. Well, you just seen it, 99 yards. 99 if that, yards. If that's not a and three, great example, then, <laughs> you know. And the next three guys after him were, were dragons. dragons. Yes. Okay, the penalty is going to back us up to the 35-yard line. And waiting on the kick. Here we go. Cross kick, and it's going to be taken by the Trojans. That is number three. And he Ooh. is hammered by number eight, Holyfield. <laughs> and I mean hammered hard at about the 35-yard line, and that's where Parker's Chapel will go to work first and 10. <laughs> the return man was number three. Let me see. Gage Taylor. And, I mean, a good – I mean, he – didn't hesitate. Took no, he off didn't. with it. You got to you like 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 see that. a quarterback running down there want to the, get in on the action. So the Trojans, let's put the ball, see what officials put at the 30, 37 yard line, and that's where they'll go to work. 8.41 to go till the half. Junction City in control, 21 zip. Tyson straight ahead on, gets the snap, goes straight ahead, and is brought down by a host of dragons. In there, let's see. Number 67 for Junction City on the tackle. It's Marquise Singleton. Number 40, Jamario Bell also in there. And a pickup of about three by Tyson. will bring up second and seven from the 40-yard line. And Junction City, you can see things starting to go as they should now. Yes. Number one team in the state. This is how we should play, defending state champions. Starting to see it take hold. Dragons bring about six up to the line. Here's a give to the halfback, and there's nowhere to go. Yeah, just one, two. Let me count them. And guess who's leading the charge, number four. One, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven dragons in on that tackle, Jacob. And, and he definitely had company with him. Uh, right now, the Trojans just seem to be really not sure what, what to do offensively. You know, the, give a lot of credit to the front seven right there of the Dragons. Uh, you know, just flying to the football. Uh, and getting, a notice getting in their gaps, getting where they need to be. If they don't make the tackle, somebody else is. That's right. And what I was fixing to say, the Dragons now starting to substitute some. Okay, here's Gia. I mean, here's Snap. Goes to Tyson. He tosses it outside incomplete. And it will bring up fourth down for Parks Chapel. And it seemed like a little disorganized there yeah, on that they, play. Quick snap, and he late, fired it out, but fired it low. Yeah, last couple of plays, uh, low snaps right there. And, of course, you know, low snap quarterback has less time to you know make a decision with what he wants to do with it and uh it's, you know, trojan gonna have to punt it away here dropping back deep is number three jacquis dance he'll be standing on about the dragon 30 and again they try to oh, kick oh. it away from him but this time it's going to backfire as the ball rolls back it hit at the 40 about the 48 and roll back over to the parks chapel side of the field giving the dragons excellent field position to work from a uh, four yard punt 
You're kidding me. Uh, I'm not kidding you. Four-yard punt. Wow. Okay, and what I was going to mention a while ago, Jacob, and uh, let's, let's touch on this in a little bit. Number 55, Blake McClellan checking into the game. I noticed they're starting, Joe C. starting to substitute, and we'll get into that in a second. The Dragons will go to work. They're going to mark the ball back at midfield. 7-13 to go in the second quarter. Junk City leading 21 to nothing. Holyfield in the gun. I believe on the other side of a man that is Dancy. Armstrong in motion. Here's a give to Dancy. Dancy cuts in the middle. Cuts Ooh. to the middle of the 45. He's at the 40. Dancy makes another cut. He dances out of a tackle. Oh, wow. He almost danced out of another tackle at about the 27-yard line. As as good of a run as that was, the block from Armstrong as he was in coming in motion might have been a tad bit better. Just a, a pancake block, so to speak. Put the guy right right on his backside. And uh, Dancy was able to cut cut up under it and uh, for the big game. A very and, and that's true. Very nice block by Josh Armstrong. All you needed after that was some Angemama and some butter. That was a pretty block. From the 27-yard line, the Dragons... Threatening again, Holyfield. This is a give to, that is going to be number seven, Keandre Evans, and he is heading to the house. Touchdown, Junction City. And just like that, two plays, 50 yards, touchdown. And the, you, the wind, the, I think the wind is uh, coming out of the uh, Parker's Chapel sails. Because as we're saying, Dancy, Dancy, Brown, Brown, Dancy, and then Evans. Evans, yeah. And then and, Armstrong. And let me throw this and in there. And Bale. And Bale. <laughs> and let me throw this guy in there because a while ago had a great reception and yes. he showed that stiff arm. Yes. Bo Hux. Yes. I mean, what do you do? I think you said it two weeks ago. Pick your poison. Pick your Which poison. Which poison do yes. you want? Pick your poison. Okay, waiting on the extra point attempt. Shoot up. Good snap. Holds down. Kicks up. And with 6.45 to go, that extra point being good, now makes it 28 nothing Junk City. And let me say this, folks. I mean, you know, you're seeing what we're seeing. But Parks Chamble's playing hard. They come out playing hard. And Coach Hounds, when I talked to him today, you know, yeah, I know what we're up against. He come out and said it. But our guys, you know, this we still have a chance to do something in the playoffs. And I'll tell you something right now. When you play – a Junction City, a Rise and a Bearden, and you make it to the playoffs as a fifth seed, you don't fear anybody else in the state. You don't, because you're playing in, you know, as you said, the, the best conference in the state. That's another thing I want to hit on. Strong as the fourth seed, that is a dangerous bunch when they get into when they get into the playoffs. Oh, you got a that very right. dangerous bunch. Uh, well, let me throw this at you. 2011, when they won state, they went in as a third seed. They had every game. The kickoff there, folks, was fair called at about the 30, 31 yard. Uh, excuse me, they're going to mark it on the 30 by Gage Taylor. They went in as a three seed, and most people wrote them off. And the next thing you know, we're up there watching Memorial Memorial getting ready to take on undefeated Carlisle, oh, wow. and they beat Stuffins out of Carlisle. They sure did. It, it, from start to finish, there was, was a no-doubter. That shows, that shows the power of this conference, what you face every week. The teams that are not doing as well as you as their fans would like, you still see talent out there. It might not be as much as this team's got, but there is talent on every team in this conference. And you look at Parks Chapel, you know, with uh, Coach Houndsman trying to build this program back up. This. There's several guys that yes. you, you yes. can build around. Okay, from the 30. Tyson gets direct snap. The Fumble. ball is fumbled. He was trying to hand it on. Let's see who got it. I believe it's They're Mar signaling Junction Jamar City. Marquez Owens, I believe. And you are correct. We got the officials holding everything. There, there we go. There's the stuff. Let's say he's just a, uh, a miss. I guess a miss, miss give on the handoff. I'm not really sure. I believe so. And all like just, his knee got just, it. Yeah, the ball just popped out. And the Dragons are in strike. Which I don't know of anywhere on the field where Junction's not in striking, in striking distance. But this the locker room, maybe. <laughs> this would <laughs> halftime. This would definitely be uh, the striking distance for the Dragons. Okay, Randall Holyfield in the gun. He's got Armstrong beside him. Drops back. He's looking downfield. He's wanting to take a shot down there, and it's going to be incomplete. He was going for, I believe that was Bo Hux. Bo Hux. Yes, Kate, Bo Hux. Cates once again with uh, with great coverage right there. He had a. He had a good play on a uh, good coverage play on Sailor Wilson in the first quarter. Uh, kept a yep. ball from, uh, you know, kept kept from a touchdown. And that'll bring up a second and ten. 
you mentioned uh, we was talking about Randall in his passing. You know, a couple of weeks ago, you was talking about how Chris was pass, passing his look. Every game, he is steadily, even since, and you can tell he's getting more and more. And Coach Carpenter mentioned this one time. He's getting more comfortable in his role and in this offense. All right, here's a give to Armstrong. Armstrong is breaking. T- they, you, oh, they're trying to grab him high. It's not going to work. Josh Armstrong Foot. has got more moves to John Travolta, folks, and he's flag. in the end zone. And we got flags down. There's a flag Let's on the plate. I don't believe the horse collar will be called, although it should have been. Twice. Twice. They're going to call holding. And it's going to be holding on the Dragons. There were two horse colors on that play, but Josh Armstrong, Josh. my goodness. Or let me allow me to do a uh, Keith Jackson here. Whoa, Nelly. Whoa, Nelly. I mean, just it's scary. <laughs> now we're talking about Armstrong. We just talked about Evans running a touchdown in a while ago. Dancy doing his thing. Now you got you got Armstrong. To hint on what you're talking about, Holyfield before that play. Uh, Another thing you can see him improving on is his pocket presence. You see him stepping up in the pocket. He, yes. he doesn't have a he doesn't have his head on a spin looking for where the pressure's coming from. He feels the pressure, steps up, and you know, and gets it gets it to his playmakers. And when you get it to those playmakers, great things can happen. All right, Holyfield gets the snap, rolls out looking. He's got a little bit of pressure, throws, it's caught. Let's see. Now they're gonna wave it off, say no, he caught it out of bounds. And I believe that was Mitchell with the reception, yes. but it'll be in, be ruled uh, incomplete. And that brings up, let's see, third and 10. Or excuse me, third and 20 after the penalty. For the Dragons, for most teams, third and 20 doesn't look good for Junction City. The only decision is who do you go to? (laughs) Sailor Wilson split to the Dragon side of the field. That is Armstrong on the direct snap. He goes up the middle, makes a move, makes another move to the outside, and it's going to be good lick and tackle there. It's going to bring him down at about the, let's see, 30-yard 30, 30 line. 30-yard line. It's going to be fourth down, but uh, very doable for this Dragon offense. Let's call it 11, yard, uh, 11 yards needed for a first down. Well, let's see what Coach Carpenter was going to do. I believe he's going for it. Bo Hooks checking into the game. He's got Brown in there already. Bale. Hooks will split out to the Dragon side of the field. Bale and Wilson split to the Parks Chapel side of the field. Armstrong lined up beside Holyfield on this fourth and 11. Holyfield drops back. He's looking. He throws. The receiver yeah, has fell down. down. Mm. He was going for Bo Hooks. Bo had slipped and fell. So it brings up fourth down. I mean, excuse me, that brings up a change of possession. And the Dragons will give it up at the, we'll call it 30-yard line of Chapel. So, opportunity there to add some more, actually to get ready to set the mercy rule into effect. And it all fails. 5.31 to go till the half. Junction City in control, 28 to nothing. And real quickly, folks, let me say, STI Sims, a proud sponsor of the Dragon Sports Network. All right, Tyson gets the snap, looks, throws. It goes through the hands of his intended receiver. That was 25 Gill. So it brings up second and 10. STI Sims, one of the world's leading integrators of emissions and opacity monitoring systems. They have over 140 years combined experience in this field. You can depend on STI Sims when it comes to maintaining uptime and compliance in your air emission sampling and reporting requirements. A proud sponsor of the Dragon Sports Stint Work, STI Sims. All right, here's a direct snap to Tyson. He hit the middle for a couple yards. A busy man he has been tonight. Yes, sir. I would say 80% of their runs. Yes. If he's not, if he's not, if he's not tossing it around, he is. He is one of the key guys that's going to run it for him. Tell you somebody he reminds me of, Jacob Media. Yes. Size and all yes. that. Reminds me of Media. Hard nosed player for the Trojans. A couple years ago, here's a snap. Holy, uh, excuse me, Tyson drops it and is going to pay for it. He picked it up and started trying to get on outside, but he's brought down by number nine, Robert Armstrong. Jamario Bell also in there, and number 70 for Junction City. A big man, Corey Kemp, also in on that play. And it brings up a fourth and 15 for the Trojans. Uh, low snap, low snap once again cost them. Yes. I mean, uh, Tyson, by the time he gets, picks it up off the ground, he really doesn't have any, anywhere to go with it. 
Well, the, as you mentioned before, the Dragons taking control of that defensive line. All right. The ball is going to bounce, and Mr. Armstrong is going to get it on this punt at about the 35. He breaks one tackle, and now he's going to be hammered down at about the 40. And that's where Junction City will go to work. Let's see where exactly they mark it. The Trojans punt it away, and the Dragons will take over. First and 10. Four minutes, 14 seconds left in the second quarter. Junction City in control here. The Dragons have now, that's what I was looking at, have changed a few. Let's see who we got in there now. Evans in the backfield. Yep, that's Evans. Okay, Holyfield drops back. He's looking, rolls out. He's got a little bit of a rush, breaks out of a couple tackles, makes another move. Big block. He's nice at the 40, block. 45. He spins out of a tackle and is brought down at midfield. That should be, That is enough for a Dragon first down. Who got that block there? Did you see it? I believe it was uh, Blake McClellan. Very uh, nice kind block. Of a, kind of a peel back block because the guy was was in was on his way to try to bring down Holyfield for only about a three four yard gain and it big block sprung him and it's a ten yard gain in the first down. And it's ball squarely at midfield, first and ten, Junction City. Dragons looking to add some more as we hit the four minute mark. Holyfield takes a snap, looks, throws, Bales got it, nice catch at about the forty, I believe that's forty one yard line. Which should be good for about nine yards. They're going to mark it at the 42. So eight-yard gain brings up a second and two. And gives the Dragons, as always, plenty of options to choose from here what they want to do. Checking into the game now is Jay Mitchell, number 15. Him and Bo Huck split to the Dragon side to fill. That is Sailor Wilson at the far side. Holyfield drops back. He's looking. He throws. That's Hux with the reception. He's got a first down and a good stiff arm. By Hooks, puts the ball at about the 31 yard line of Parker's Chapel. More than enough for a Dragon first down. Four or five yard cushion from the corner, and the seven yard, you know, corner gets the gets the backpedal and the seven yard curl route. Hooks seems to run it the best because, uh, you know, another sure handed grab and then, you know, three or four more yards after the catch. That's right. And, it's, uh, and it goes back to what we said earlier. You start looking at all these others, and all at once, here's Bo Hux picking up 10, 11, 12 Uns yards. Unsung, of, yeah, unsung hero. Holyfield gets a snap, drops back. He's got some pressure on him. Now he sprints out. He's looking, throws it downfield deep. It's going out of bounds. It'll be incomplete. He was looking for, I believe that was Sailor, Sailor Wilson. Wilson. And that'll bring up a second and 10 for the Dragons. 3-11 till the half. Hogwild Pest Control, one of the proud sponsors of the Dragon Sports Network. My good buddy, Mr. Tucker. Got any pests you want to deal with? Give Hogwild Pest Control a call. We got a timeout on the field by the Dragons. And just a reminder, folks, let us know where you watching us from. And here in a few minutes, we'll give out the trivia question. And we're going to talk about a former Dragon, of course. So be ready for that. McDonald's Grocery. Red Henry. Folks, I've talked about those sausages, egg sandwiches until Dr. Luber said I need to go on a diet. But I tell you what, you can't beat them. But not only that, you got everything you need at McDonald's Grocery. Gas, groceries. Any catering needs, if you got a family get-together, church social, business, whatever, give my friend Mr. Henry a call at McDonald's Grocery, a proud sponsor of the Dragon Sports Network. Okay, the Dragons back on the field after this timeout. They're going to face, like I said a while ago, a second and ten from about the... Got a rough angle to deal with here. About 30-yard line. All right, Holyfield rolls out. He's looking down. Got a heavy rush on him, and he's going down. Three or four Trojans there in on the play, including number 81, Jess Parker. And I believe that was number five, Logan Harbor, also in there on the tackle. And the Dragons will lose about yeah. 12, 13 yeah, yards that's, on that's that play. What, that's what you don't want to see. It's what we were mentioning in, in the pregame about – you know, kind of letting your guard down, take, you know, not necessarily taking a playoff, but 
you know, you got to got to keep that got to keep that uh, momentum going. Got to got to keep, keep the focus in yes. place. That's right. All right, here's a give to Armstrong. number four, Josh Armstrong. He swings it outside, now cuts back toward the middle. Josh Armstrong, oh, does another move. He's still on his feet, folks, weaving and bobbing and diving. And he's going into the end zone. More moves to John Travolta on Saturday night. Touchdown, Junction City. Josh Armstrong and hold every. And they're going to bring it all back. Mm. Legal block on the Dragons, all for naught. Mr. Armstrong had another highlight. Yes, he did. Hmm. Had it stood, I think he would have uh, he would have raised Dancy's <laughs> run earlier right there. I think. <laughs> who knows? Them two may have a little a little a little bet going. Who can have the who can have the most most explosive run? Just the the balance that he that he displays right there. He he almost shook himself. But was able to keep, <laughs> but was able to keep his balance and then make a couple more moves to get into the end zone. But as he said, all for naught. And good. Gracious. Oh man, it's about a 30-yard penalty. Yeah, we still. He's running out of real estate here. Yeah. I'd, if we had a real estate sponsor, I could throw them in right there. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Third down from the Dragon 42. Here's a give now to. That is going to be Keandre Evans. He runs over a guy, a Trojan. That is Gage Taylor. And he'll go down to or up to about midfield, and it's going to bring up fourth. And still a long, long ways to go. Fourth and 15, 20, 20, about 30. Yep, fourth and 30. They put the ball on the Dragon 49. Junk City, of course, going to punt it away. Jarkel Brown in punt formation. Fourth down. 139 to go till the half. And we had a guy not on there. Go, Mr. Mason gets in there now. We're ready to go. Here's a snap. Pretty good snap. Jarkel puts his foot into it. Lost it up pretty high. He's going to get the roll here. Well, kind of goes a little sideways now, but it will get it down to about the 21, 22 yard line of Parks Chapel yeah. before the Trojans will go to work. With 119 to go till the half. Junction City leads 28 to nothing. Dragons in control. Pretty much uh, the whole game. Well, after the first few possessions, they took control, I guess you could say. And they've been handling it ever since. And now the Trojans, of course, would love to get a little something going here before the half. John Tyson in the gun. He got four receivers out. Low snap again, but he handles it well. Looking, he's wanting to put it downfield deep, but the Dragons oh, are on him, and down he goes. And I believe that was Jamario Bell bringing down John Tyson. A big loss on the play. And let's see, it's about second and 20 for Parker's Chapel. And folks, I'm going to go ahead and give you the trivia question here as we get near the half. And like I said, we're talking about former Dragon football players. And this one in particular, I'm going to, in fact, Jacob, I'm going to let you handle the trivia question. You don't mind. All right. All right, here it is. What former Dragon played at the following stadiums and during what years, of course, did he play at these stadiums? They are Sun Devil Stadium, Cal Berkeley, the Rose Bowl, USC's Coliseum, and Alston Stadium. All right. The Trojans run a play here. The ball is fumbled. Let's see. I believe they re I believe Parks Chapel. Re no, they didn't. The Dragons got it. So Junction City football and the Dragons will have a chance to put the mercy rule in place for the second half here because it is deep, deep, deep in Trojan territory. The 11 yard line, I believe, is where they're going to put it. So Junction City with a first and 10 at the 11 yard line. Trying to see if I can get to there. We go. I can see the clock now. Just ain't got a great angle here. 38 seconds to go. All right, Holyfield gets the snap, drops back, looks, lost it into the end zone. He's got him. Touchdown. That is to, I believe, Jamario Bell. Bell. And one play, 11 yards. It's 34 nothing, Junction City. Pinning the extra point. And you couldn't have asked for a better. Kind of, he kind of handed it to him right there before half. Park Shop was going to have to. I guess punt it back, and Dragons would have had to have had to have, uh, cover a lot more ground to try to get the mercy rule before, before halftime. But then they get it inside the inside the 15 in one play, 
uh, Holyfield hooks up with hooks up with Bell right there. And that pretty well sums things up. You can see the Trojans just out. Okay, now the Dragons. Here we go. The fake. They throw it. Bale falls. Oh, they lofted it to him. They're trying to get the two. Something to put on film for future opponents to look at. And Bale tripped and failed, bagging up, trying to catch it. So, so the score remains 34. Hold nothing. everything on the mercy rule for the, for the <laughs> <Yeah>. time being. <laughs> Yeah, let's put a hold on the mercy rule. All right. Joe City adds another quick six points there. They're up now 34 to nothing. And go over our trivia question one more time while one they get time. ready. One more time. What former Dragon played at the following stadiums, and during what years did he play at these stadiums? Sun Devil Stadium, Cal Berkeley, the Rose Bowl, USC's Coliseum, and Altson Stadium. Okay. We're looking for the player, of course, and the years he played. And if you pay close attention to those stadiums, you'll figure out what conference. Yes. All right, Junk City to kick it off. Going to kick it kind of cross again, high and deep. Let's see. It's going to be fielded by number six, I believe, the Trojans. He's sprinting across the field trying to look for some running room and goes down hard at about the, let's see, 30. 37 yard line folks let's call it that first and 10. right there on the return looked him looked as if he might have some green grass in front of him and the javante rogers just cut the legs right out from underneath him and the trojans will have time for a couple of couple of plays that's it 25 seconds left to go tyson in the gun He's got three receivers out. The snap goes straight to him, of course, and he'll just run it right into the middle. He's breaking a few still tackles, but well, he's still going. About, <laughs> about five or six dragons in there trying to bring them down. Let's see what they mark. About the 41, 42-yard lines. The clock running. It's under five seconds now, and I believe that's going to be the last half, play yes. of the first half. And that'll wrap it up here at Victor Nipper Stadium in Parker's Chapel. It is halftime and our score, Junction City 34, Parker's Chapel nothing. And we're going to leave. We're going to stay right here for a minute, folks. In fact, Derek, just leave. Uh, we're going to leave us up. And here in a little bit, we'll step us up. But we'll leave it up so you can see the trivia question. And kind of sum up the uh, first half for us, Jacob. What do you think about how things went? Let's start with offense, dragging offense. Well, uh, yeah, first couple of drives of the game, you could tell that you know, each team was trying to fill, fill the other one out, both kind of going back and forth. And then the Dragons, I believe it was a dancy run, got them on the board first. And, you know, he did score twice in the first half. And uh, we'll get the yards to you here in a minute. And then highlighted on the uh, big 99-yard interception return for a touchdown, you, you, you kind of put your defense in a, in a tough situation. It was a good snap on the punt, and it just went right through Brown's hands. Uh, you know, that – that stuff happens. So the defense takes the field, you know, you know, 15 yards from a from a from a touchdown, and then Spark Shop calls timeout on fourth down. They're going to kick it, and then they decide to go for it. And then, as we said, I believe it was Jay Mitchell. Jay Mitchell. Jay Mitchell picked it off and went 99 yards to the house for the Dragons, and uh, you know. Pretty good first half for Junction City. Up 34 nothing. You know, still some mental mistakes. That 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 stuff will that stuff will happen. You know, it'll be stuff you can work on and see in film. You know, uh, Armstrong had, I believe, uh, a couple of big runs that, you know, were called back, holding penalty on one, I believe, clipping on another. But that's the kind of stuff you just got to realize when the, when the young man's in the open, which, in, in whoever's defense it was that that made the, you know, that made the holding or the or the clipping. He really was never in the open. It was him in his flashy running style, making people miss and, you know, do, doing what he had to do to get to the end zone. But overall, for offensively for the Dragons in the first half, you know, a solid performance. And it'll be it'll be I'm curious to see what goes on in the second half, what guys they have where, who all, who all they have, you know, lined up in uh, different positions. Defensively, Junction City, uh, Touch on that, and of course, you did mention uh, one of the plays by the defense, yes. the 99-yard interception return, which was a big, you know, Trojans had a chance to gain some momentum, big momentum swing. But overall, Dragon defense, your thoughts on it? Uh, definitely. Uh, the 
the first drive by Parker Chapel, they seemed to have some kind of some life. They were they were spreading. They come out in the T formation, you know, kind of pounding at the Dragons, and then they would audible into the shotgun, and they actually were having some were able to get some momentum going and drive the ball down the field a little bit. But the Dragon defense did come into their own there. You know, Chapel was trying to spread them out, but uh, fr front seven of the of the Dragons did a good job to uh, you know contain Tyson. He's a very hard nosed runner, and and also. The music, the music for the cheerleaders just started playing, kind of threw me off. But also, and then as we said, you know, defense put a tough situation on that uh, fumbled, you know, the fumbled punt. But then they come up big right there. That's, that, I mean, that's you can you can't call, you can't design that any better than than how it happened. I mean, Mitchell jumps in front of a pass that, uh, the, in fact, the receiver actually, you know, had, was open, just jumped in front of it, and then it was. It was, as they say in South Carolina, he had a lot of pasture in front of him. Yeah, he sure did. And the things that we mention all the all the time, you know, it sounds redundant when we say it. Speed, 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 speed. Both sides of the ball, when you have that, and I, I'll never forget, I, I think of uh, when Jimmy Johnson was coaching the Hurricanes at Miami, and he was talking about all the speed that Miami had and everything. And something that uh, he brought up, he mentioned, he said, there's one thing you can't coach. You either have it or you don't, and that's, that's speed. speed. That's it. The Dragons have it on both sides of the ball, and it showed in the first half on, on several plays. And i tell you what, the Rev here, he's got the stats ready. I'll let you do the honors uh kind of giving us first half stats there, what Junk City done. Uh, Dancy, as we said, he has, you know, he, he did start the game tonight. I believe that's six attempts. Six rushes, 116 yards, and two touchdowns. Keandre Evans, he's carried the ball twice for 35 yards and a score. And then uh, receiving-wise, uh, Jarkel Brown with two catches for 58 yards. Jamario Bell, two catches for 19 yards in the last touchdown there. And Bo Hux, three catches for 32 yards. And I would I would be willing to say that of uh, Hux's 32 receiving yards, there's probably 20, 25 after the catch right there. Yes. Making yes. making plays, showing his athleticism. You know, we sent it down here, stiff-armed a guy and just carried him about eight, nine yards. And then defensively for the Dragons, uh, I'll, I'll give you one guess as who's leading who's leading the team in tackles. Right, so I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go out on the limb here. Out on the limb. going all the way out on the limb. I'm going to say number four, Josh Armstrong. You've, you've, you've done this before, haven't you? Uh -huh. All right, well, yeah. Josh Armstrong, 10 tackles. Uh, Taylor Mason chipping in with five. Jamario Bell adding nine. And then Jay Mitchell with eight tackles. But the highlight of his night so far is the 99-yard interception return. Yes. Four that, touchdown. That'll be something to remember for a while. And also uh, Holyfield, 7 of 15, 109 yards, and the uh, the last touchdown here in the first half. And his 15, re uh, I start to say receptions, his 15 pass attempts, puts him, moves him up to, I believe, number three on one category and number, uh, number four on another. But the categories we're talking about is uh, pass attempts in a season. He is now, he moved ahead of Stephen Jones and Sean Enos. So I'm pretty, okay, he's in third on that one. And I believe fourth place, he moved up tonight passing again Stephen Jones, who had 116 pass attempts in his career. Mr. Holyfield now has 126. I'm mean, having to do that. I don't have the uh, exact numbers in front of me, but he is now, I believe, fourth place on that list, yes. and doing an outstanding job with this offense. And and that's, that's something else to touch on uh, from the quarterback position, especially in this offense with the spread and and making your reads and, and you know trying to find guys open, especially when he's rushed out of the pocket. You know, there's no there's not there's there's no stats for that. I mean, there's no stats for the presence he has in the pocket. There's no stats for him, you know, making a, making a guy miss to try to, to try to find his retriever. We've seen it on, I believe it was either the first or second drive. He got called for an illegal forward pass. He was probably two yards past the line of scrimmage when he tried to throw right. the ball forward. But you have to admire, you know, most quarterbacks these days, especially with the way the NFL's changed and the way college football's changing, drop back one, two seconds, and then let's just tuck it and run and see what we can get. You have to admire the young man for dropping back in the pocket, feeling the pressure, and then still looking for his, looking for his uh, targets downfield. Targets that he has, I mean, you know, pick your poison. You know, targets everywhere. You have to admire for, you know, 
still still trying to still trying to throw the ball right there. Trying to put the ball into the hands of the others so they can make yes. the plays, and that's what you like. And, and it touches on something that Coach Carpenter talked about. I believe it was I want to say about two three weeks ago he brought this up, and you and right after what you mentioned about how Chris has passed look, and that is that Randall Holyfield has gotten comfortable with this offense. Uh, He's, he knows his role in it. He understands his role in it better, and it shows. It has shown the last yes, three weeks sure especially. Has. And if you look at the stats, if you if you took his stats from the first game all the way to now, you'll see where he wouldn't didn't have very many rush yards or he'd lose yards or whatever. But after the Bearden game on, he has steadily come on. And it showed here tonight. Like you said, you have to admire him for staying in that pocket. And another guy, and let's talk about him again because you mentioned him a while ago, Bo Hux. Not only on offense, defense doing a very good job. We don't call his name much, but if you'll look, he's right there in the middle of the action doing his job. Yeah, that goes back to that goes back to guys being in position where they're supposed to be, assignment football. And yeah, their they, their their name might not be called over the PA, but I guarantee you, Monday afternoon during the film session, you know the coach is going to acknowledge the guy for being where he needs to be. And Bo Hooks is one of them guys. Yeah, not 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 a flashy guy, not a guy that's going to you know catch 100, 150, 150 have 150 receiving yards or anything like that. But a guy that is an integral part of this offense. Yes. As far as we talk about Brown Bell. I mean, Dancy, Armstrong, Evans, we go on and on, Holyfield, and then there's Bo Hux, you know, sure hands. And as we, as I said earlier in the uh, halftime show, uh, 32 receiving yards on three receptions, and probably 20 to 25 of those are after the catch, after contact's been made with, with the cornerback. And he, he keeps move, keeps his feet moving. And as you said, that's the that's the off-season program, off-season conditioning right there, Sean. Oh, that, that's stiff arm. So just, just carrying a guy. Yeah. Well, on the stiff arm, he caught it. He had about a uh, – I can't remember exactly. I'm going to say about five yards. He catches the ball, and then he makes his move, and the Trojan defender's coming up to tackle. He's fixing to tackle Bo Hux, and Bo puts a stiff arm on him and takes him with him yes. about 15 more, just driving him out of the way. And that's what you want to see. And I can just hear a, a defensive coordinator right now or, or one of the sisters on the field that's third and nine for the Dragons, and he's hollering. He's hollering, you know, okay, you got to watch Brown. you got to watch Dancy. you <laughs> you got to watch. you got to watch. Armstrong, yeah. and it, you, here's Bo Hux yeah. gets the ball, picks up another eight, you know, eight nine yards, gets the first down, That's and you know, and you know that defensive coordinator of the Sisters Hall, oh, dead gum, you know, that guy, there's that guy, yeah. and like you said, a very important part of this offense. Let's talk about two guys that they've had recruiting attention that we might not holler their names out enough. But last week had a big. Uh, both of these guys had a big game. But talk about what they're going through, and that is Taylor Mason, number 52, and Jamario Bell, two guys that uh, they're doing their jobs. They might not get their names called enough, especially Mr. Mason. Uh, yeah, I, and and you know, graduated in 2010. Two real good buddies. Two guys I played with. You know, Alan Alan Turner and Byron Jones. And uh, I'd be willing to say that these guys are handling the situation the same way them two would. You know. Yeah, college football is in the future. It's going to happen for them. They realize that. Their teammates realize that. They see the letters in their cubbies, you know, from Oregon and Ole Miss, you know, wherever. And as far as in Byron's case, you know, all over the all over the country. And then you you see that you see that, and but they're just they're just regular guys. They realize they realize what's at stake. They realize why they you know why they practice in, in the hot days of July, the dog days of August. And, you know, they're in this they're in this together. And yeah, as we were talking about Mason, might not get his name called, but the front seven of the Dragons, especially in the past couple of weeks, has done a great job. The reason why Armstrong has uh, he has ten tackles tonight, 120 so 136 tackles on the on the year. Seven right. seven and a half games, I guess. There's a reason why that's like that. The defensive line being in position, making a guy cut back. There's four. Bell containing the containing the edge. That's as we were talking about in the pregame. The last time a team was able to legitimately run outside on the Dragons, is it? One doesn't come to come to my mind. You may think of one, but one doesn't come to my mind. And you know that that goes just goes to show with what you know with what Bell does on the edge and what Mason does in the middle. 
I, I, when you said that, I was thinking, okay, who was the last one? I can't remember one. They might get a run. Oh yeah, here I mean, they, there. you know, it's not it's not going to be perfect. Uh, you guy might get outside every now and then, but to just constantly back and forth, outside, 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 it it hasn't happened, and that's you know that's you tip your hat to your front seven right there, and those two those two guys are uh, two main two main two main plugs in the front seven for the Dragon defense. That's right, and uh, the other nine tech, you know, he's talking about Bale on one end, Robert Armstrong yes. also doing an outstanding job. And before I go on, let me say this real quick, folks. Uh, we told our cameraman to go take a break because he's having to do handheld tonight due to the angle we got where we're having to work with and doing an outstanding job. And as uh, far as I'm concerned, a five-star recruit, Mr. Derek Watson. Yes. Outstanding yes. job with the camera tonight. And we uh, – He's getting his set. In fact, he's doing a few exercises, getting loose, <laughs> getting loose for the second half. He may have you down there here for too long. <laughs> I hope not. I might not be able to get back up. <laughs> well, we talked about the defense, talked about the offense, and I'll let you do your Jim Moore imitation here. Let's talk about the playoffs. Yes, let's talk about them. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It's almost time for the playoffs it's to begin. Time. I mean, we can't say it enough. You know, we're up here in the uh, press box, so to speak, and but you know it's. Cool crisp night outside. No, I keep saying it, but it just it just drives me. Grass is starting to turn. It's, it's just got that it's got that playoff smell. It's just a, it's in the air, and it's here, and it's time's coming. Okay, here's the question I got for you. The eighth game of the season, the Dragons have one more, and of course they will not play the Norfolk game. Norfolk canceling their season as the one seed, which. They're just about assured of getting us 34 to nothing at the half. Let's go ahead and say it. Yeah. They're going to have the one seed for the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing that really gets interesting. When we looked at the playoff bracket, Junction City could open up this season with possibly their toughest second-round opponent ever. And it's a game that if it happens, and it, chances are it's going to happen. And I asked Coach Carpenter about it, and he was kind of like, well, you know, I don't really want – and then he goes, yeah, it's probably going to happen. The Garden Go Devils. And Garden, of course, uh, going into the night, I believe was 7-1, and one, their lone loss to – I forget who's leading the way I believe Dirks is. Yes. I believe they've already played Dirks where their loss is at. I'm not sure, so I won't go any further than that. But we could see the Go Devils come into town. The Dragon staff has taken a look at them. I'm pretty sure has already looked at some film, and it's got their attention. If they get by that game, the third, the semifinals would possibly be the Bearden or Rising, depending on who wins tonight's game. I believe oh, in Cleveland County. I don't know who in between those. I'm not sure, but let's start with Gurdon. Okay. You're Coach Carpenter. I'll just put this question to you. What do you do to take care of the regular season and get your team ready, knowing what they're going to face in less than a month, but also with about a 20-day layoff in between your last game and that second-round game with Gurdon? What do you do? Well, you, one thing's for sure, you can't do anything you can't do anything different. I mean, there's no really need to change anything up. Any, you know, stop doing this, start doing this. You just got to treat it. Yeah, there's not going to be football on Fridays, but but the football that is coming is what you've been practicing for all year, and that's the mindset that you have to have, that there is football coming, and that when that football does make itself available to be played, it's suitcase. You know, you pack it up, win or go home, so to speak. So. You just got to stay stay within yourself. Keep guys healthy, especially next week. You may see, you know, first halves from guys, and then, you know, kind of, kind of choke it down and kind of end the regular season with with younger guys getting some experience, getting some valuable experience and playing time. And then you just take it one week at a time because, as you were mentioning, that's a that's a heavy that's a heavy workload right there that could possibly uh that could possibly happen in the playoffs with Gurdon and then. A quality, you have to say it's a quality third round opponent because, I mean, to make it that far, quality third round opponent, and right? Then, and then a conference opponent in late that knows you in late November, Bearden rising. You know, that's a pick your poison. That's a oh, pick man. your poison right oh, there. Oh my! I mean, that's about yeah. to, let me do the great Paul Hills. Yeah. Oh my! Okay, our trivia question. Do you have it in front of you there? You I want to sure read it do. one more time? Shout it out there to him. We have a winner. But we do. do okay. the, if we have right, a winner, here's the question. And I'm not surprised who it is. What former Dragon played at the following stadiums and during what years? 
the stadium. Sun Devil Stadium, Arizona State. Right. Uh, Cal Berkeley, the Rose Bowl, USC's Coliseum, and Oregon's Stadium, Austin Stadium. Give and, us the answer. And the answer is former Dragon, Mr. Randy Cole, who played in these stadiums in 1990 and 1991. And I'll give you a hint now, and you tell me who won it. His son got passed tonight in two categories. <laughs> I, you already I, knew I it, knew it before, yeah. Go ahead it, and tell I him. I knew it before the hint. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Craig Jones. Craig Jones won the trivia tonight. And I'm going to give a shout-out to Mr. Todd Wilson. He had the right person, but he had the wrong years. But uh, uh, Randy Cole played at UCLA in 1990 and 91. And, uh, folks, while we have a chance, and I'm going to just basically read the text, but this is something that's special. And... Uh, well, here on the Dragon Network, we don't mind saying it. Praise God. Uh, my neighbor, our neighbor, Mr. Kenneth Jackson, had a kidney transplant today. And so far, everything is looking good, folks. Uh, we're all praying for his full recovery. And we are very, very thankful for the donor and praying for their family as well. Give the gift of life, folks. Organ donations are the gift of life. And I tell you what, that just, you couldn't cap off a great evening any better than that. And uh, our thoughts and prayers with the Jackson Definitely. family and with the person that donated the kidney to help Mr. Um, it, with his, their family too to help Mr. Jackson and we wish him all the best as we get ready here to start the second half here in the second we're going to do the shout outs folks our uh, halftime show was brought to you by First Financial Bank we'll talk about all our sponsors here in a minute Parks Chapel will kick off the start of the second half the Dragons comfortably in front 34 to nothing about to gain a share of the AAA conference title. And here we go. Kind of short kicks, going to go out of bounds, and Junction City will go to work first and 10 from the 35 yard line. So, second half, I imagine we're going to start seeing a lot of substituting. And I believe it's already taking place. So, we'll be shouting out a lot of names here in a little bit. As the Dragon coaching staff wants to get people on yes, film yes, as many guys as they can get some uh get some valuable valuable playing time and experience especially as uh as we keep talking about the playoffs getting close that's right and something that we was going to touch on earlier that I didn't get a chance to and that was talking about the film uh some of the plays we saw there in the first half some of the people going in and out and we get a chance here we'll get back into yeah. that in a minute all right first and ten Holyfield in the gun, drops back, throws. It's going to be oh. caught. Whoa, man. Let me do a da na na da na na there. Definitely. Charkel Brown with a nice one-handed grab to pick up about eight. If we had, that ball was over him. If we had national cameras, that would probably have made your 11 o'clock sports center. <laughs> <laughs> a great grab right there. Good five-yard gain. I don't know. I'm not sure if it was intended for Brown or if it was intended for Hooks, who had run about a 12-yard route and was kind of directly in line with him. But either way, great play. It'll bring up a second, let's call it five. Dragons got twin split to their side of the field here. Holyfield straight drop, looks, throws, bails, got it, cuts back into the middle, breaks away from a tackle, go down at about the 49 as he gets brought down at about the 49-yard line. That's more than enough for a Junction City first down. Second half underway here. You're watching Junction City football on the Dragon Sports Network, brought to you by Eldorado Chemical. So the Dragons on the move here. And still, I was looking, trying to get all the numbers here. Still basically the first, yeah, first unit in first there, first minus a few yeah. on the uh, line. First and ten. Hux Rogers split, excuse me, Mitchell split to Dragon side of the field. We got a flag. Let's see what we got here. And it'll be against the Dragons. False start. Illegal motion is the call against Junction City. Or you can use the illegal motion. Either one. <laughs> either one. <laughs> it's going to back them up. And it's the little things like that, of course. You're going to have some yeah, penalty, but Coach Carpenter, right yeah. he's going to want them cut down. Especially after, uh, you know, two quick passes coming out of halftime. Two very, you know, very good plays, and then you have that. Okay, so it'll be a first and 15. Bale. Wilson split to the side, uh, dragon side of the field. But Wilson goes in motion. Holyfield looking, going downfield for Bale. Bale's got it. Nice catch. And it's going to be down to the, about the, close to the dragon 20. We'll see where they mark it. And a big, big yeah. 27, 28 yard pass play there. Gives Junk City another first down. 
And like a well-oiled machine, the Dragons. Yeah, that's just a that's a going mis- to work. That's got mismatch written all over it on the outside. Bell uh, well, uh, was the lone receiver at the bottom of your screen when Wilson went in motion, and there's nothing. I mean, there's really nothing the defender there's, can do. There's really nothing you can do right there. Goes back to your pick your poison statement. Yeah. Armstrong lined up beside Bell. Excuse me, beside Holyfield. And here's a quick outlet to Hux. He got it, throwed it a little too far outside. Bo couldn't get it. I'll bring up a second and ten. And as we mentioned, Jacob, I mean, you, you pick your poison. Which one do you want to try to stop? Which one do you want to try to slow down? Well, here's this guy putting a hurt on you. And right. Junction City, if they can get all these, keep all these weapons healthy and keep them working. They can handle that possible, you know, Gurdon in the second round. I know we're talking about it early here, but that's what we're looking yeah, at. Yeah, definitely. Even with 10.36 to go here in the third quarter. All right, here's a give to Armstrong. He makes a move oh. up middle and gets tripped up after about a couple of yards. It'll bring up third and let me see where they mark it. Lean out here and look. That's going to be about a two-yard gain, so third, third and eight. eight. Junction City leading, 34 to nothing. Four down territory right here. He- you know, they went for two on the touchdown right before half, didn't didn't convert. You know, so it's still mercy rule still available. And that is true. Okay, third and eight. Holyfield. Give to Armstrong. He busts up the middle, breaks away from one tackle and gets wrapped up and brought down after about let me see, about a four yard gain, I'd say. It's gonna be fourth down. And I'm like you, I believe we're looking at uh four down territory here. Yeah. The Dragons show no signs of doing anything but going for it. We're going to call it fourth and about five. So a three-yard game by Armstrong on that run. And Junction City is going for it. Going to try to get the mercy rule in place here. 9.30 to go third quarter. STI Sims, one of the proud sponsors of the Dragon Sports Network. Here we go. Fourth down. Holyfield gets snapped, drops back, looks, throws. It's going to be caught by Jamario oh, Bell. Bro. And as you said, that's got Mitch m- mismatch. Yeah, it sure does. That's a uh, Dragons come out of a different formation right there. They uh, instead of the double twin set that we've seen uh, most of the night, they had uh, Bell, and I'm not sure who was uh, on the bottom of the bottom of the field, but they had they had Wilson and the uh, other receiver brought in as kind of wings, and they uh, you know run ten yard outs, and then Bell run the flag, and a nice catch right there. You know, good throw too by Holyfield. So, first and ten for the Dragons, I believe. I can't tell if it's the first. It's going to be first and goal. Okay, I'm looking at the scoreboard here, and it's got first and ten on it. And now it's maybe going to be false start. False start against the Dragons. And that'll back them up. And that's the second one on this drive. Junction City 34, Parker's Chapel nothing. So now a first and goal at the 11-yard line. Checking into the game for Junction City, number six, Javante Rogers. Dragons break the huddle with two split to the chapel side, single man to the Dragon side, and that is Sailor Wilson. Holyfield, the give to, I believe that is Josh, no, excuse me, Keandre Evans, and he's in the end zone. Touchdown, Junction City. 11-yard scamper by Evans. And we cue up the Judds. Have mercy. 40 to nothing, Junction City. 8.34 to go, third quarter. And another fine sponsor of the Dragon Sports Network, Three Creeks Baptist Church. We talked about that a while ago. Let's talk about the Three Creeks Youth Ministry. Come and experience God through a time of contemporary worship, biblical teachings, and fun with friends. Students from 7th grade to college are invited to attend. For more information, call 870-863-9407 or on the web, threecreeksbaptist.com. That's Three Creeks Youth Ministry. Jarkel Brown to attempt the extra point. Snaps high. Will Smith uh, pulls it in. Now he's going to try to run with it. Breaks a couple tackles. Will Smith. (laughs) Hey. What do you say about that? I think the young man's got a couple good moves himself. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, that wasn't designed. High snap, and he just called his own number right there. And, you know. 
I think Very he's flashy. Yeah, I think he said, you know what? Let me show what I can do yeah. here. <laughs> he's watching Josh and and Jaquise and all the others. He said, let me get in on this. The two point conversion successful. So now your new score is Junction City 42. Parks Chapel nothing. And it's time for some shout outs from Hot Springs, Donna and David Barnett tuning in tonight to the Dragon Sports Network. Miss Teresa Matoki, Matoshi, I <laughs> got her name all messed up there, loves watching her dragons and says, Go Dragons! Also, I lost my place here. Here we go. Mary, I don't believe I can get this last name right, but from Garland, Texas, she's tuning in tonight on the Dragon Sports Network checking out Junction City and Chapel here. There's our kickoff. Gage Taylor, fair catch at the, let's see, 33-yard line, and that's where Parks Chapel go to work first and 10. Also tonight, Allison and Todd Wilson from Lily, Louisiana, our, our neighboring uh, community just down the road tuning in tonight. Tough man from Three Creeks, Shelby and Dustin and Conway. C. Pappy from the Dragon Lair in the Dragon Chair. Folks, that's top secret stuff. We can't go no further than that. And High Banks, or excuse me, Hill Banks, Enos, Texas, with us tonight. And, of course, we mentioned also Mr. Kenneth Jackson, and I'll touch on that again in a little bit. And one more special person we want to make sure to get a mention to. All right, Parker's Chapel in the gun. Tyson, quarterback, still drops back. Good snap, but he's in trouble immediately. Robert Armstrong on him, and he's going down. And, I mean, snap of the yeah. ball, Tyson had no, just enough to time to look up and say, yeah. there's Robert that Armstrong. He, that time he actually had a good snap, but there's nowhere to go. And uh, Armstrong did a good job to bring him down because he is a, uh, as we mentioned, he's about six foot, six, 215. Yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's a pretty big load right there. But once Robert latched on, he did not let go. <laughs> so it'll be second and let's call it 14 for the Trojans. 7.30 to go in the third quarter. Junction City will improve to 8-0 on the season. Here's a give to, I believe that is Edwards, and as I said before, nowhere no, to go. Nowhere to go. And Junction City now start to substitute, start and roll in. No gain on the play. It's third As the Dragons, 22 wins in a row consecutively. 22 in a row in conference play. They are one away now as far as conference wins from tying the all-time school record, which was set from 2001 to 2005. And they'll go for that next week against the mighty hermits of Hermitage. All right, direct snap to Tyson. He gives to, oh, a hard lick there by 21 for Junction City. And that's Devontae Smith. Uh, Lane, Wood, Lane Wood in the backfield the backfield first and the Trojans will have to uh, just have to punt it away. I missed the number of the Trojan runner. I mean he was hammered before yeah. I could even get a number. So fourth down and Parkers Chapel will punt it away. Junction City drops Jarkel Brown back at about the 38 yard line. 6-18 to go third quarter. There's a snap and again they're trying to kick and this one is going sh oh boy. Things just keep getting worse for the Trojans. Yeah. Another four-yard punt for Parker's Chapel. That's that's <laughs> it's it's kind of going rough in all in all directions for him tonight. It is. James and Sandy Bryan. I wanted to mention them real quick, Mr. James from Monroe now to Timberlane. He's kind of doing the George Jefferson. He's moving on up. Hopefully he keeps progressing, and we wish him nothing but the best. Hope he's tuning in to us tonight. Give a shout out to the uh, to the best to the best holder in the land, so to speak, uh, Mr. David Bell. He's with the Jones family uh, in Dewitt, Arkansas, right now. We've mentioned his name earlier. As uh, Holyfield passed him on the uh, single season and career pass attempts list, uh, Mr. Stephen Jones, head coach of the Dewitt Dragons. They are, uh, I believe, one win away from uh, their first playoff appearance in, in quite some time. So uh well, hey. ho hope all is going good for them and uh hope y'all have a uh, a safe a safe return home. 
Well, I tell you what, what he walked into up there and taken over, you know, you, you, people are like, okay, he's got to get them winning. Well, something people do not think about that a coach faces sometime, and Coach Carpenter, when Stephen took that job, said this, and that is you got to teach people to win. I yeah, just realized now yeah, who had behind me here. I got one of these South Caledonia folks snuck in on me. Yeah. I, hope, I hope they check, made sure there wasn't no knife or anything <laughs> on them. <laughs> I turned around and did a double take. <laughs> But um, the situation he walked into up there, you know, yeah. when you got to teach people how to win. You got you got your work cut out and for a, you. And a tough, sometimes overlooked part of the state as far as uh, caliber of football. It's a tough, tough division over there that you're not just gonna, you know, wins don't come just to you know dime a dozen. You hard well, fought every week, you know, kind of like down here. Right. Well, you got Warren, Pine Bluff, Dollarway. You know, that's just a couple of them in that conference. It's salty. Okay, the Dragons got some new personnel in there. Will Smith is now your quarterback. And on first down, he gives to number 21, and that's Devontae Smith. So we got the Smith tandem in the backfield and a couple yards on the pickup. Also in the game now, let me just let's go ahead and get started. Mr. Sidarius Livingston, number 88, has checked in. Now he's checking out and coming in or replacing him, number 13, Akeem Gibson. Let's see, number 58, Kelvin Benjamin now is also in. Number 82, Mike Williams in the game. Chad Butler also in now. So the Dragons emptying, just about emptying all the second unit, or putting all the second unit, excuse me, in there. Here's a pass to him, a little high, incomplete, and we got a flag down. And we got holding against the Dragons. You like to see that from uh, a lot of the second union guys. They come out and they're slinging the ball around too because, uh, you know, you just never know when, when their number may be called. Well, it's something we have touched on the last couple weeks, especially with the way the games kind of get decided early, and that is you want to get some film down on some of these young guys. You want to see what you got, see how they're progressing also from week to week. Yeah. Second down. Yeah, you don't you, – you know, their, their film is just as important as the, you know, the film in the first couple of quarters. All right, here's a give to Prevante, Prevante Avery, and he'll pick up a couple yards there on second and let's call it 22. And about a five-yard pickup for Avery, so it'll bring up third down and about 17, 18 yards. The Dragons next week return home to the Muse to take on the Hermitage Hermits. And that'll wrap up the regular season for Junction City. And you wonder what kind of program you got here. Consider this, Jacob. This is the 16th year in a row. 16 years in a row. Eight or more wins in a season. I could think of several schools that would gladly swap for that. Yes. All right, here's a, high, a little high snap. Smith handles it. Makes the throw to Chad Butler, who pulls it in for about a – or did he lose it? Incomplete. Incomplete. I thought he had it for a second. Incomplete. Brings up fourth down, and the Dragons will punt it away. So the second unit for Junk City getting some work. Here with about 2.12 to go in the third quarter. And the Dragons will remain undefeated against Parker's Chapel in this series. Six and oh. Yes, sir. All right, here's the punt. Good punt nice by punt. Brown. It's going to be pulled in by number two Good for coverage. Chapel and nowhere to go. Great coverage there. Who was Ke the man Keon down there Andre handling that? was down there on it. That was number two, Mark Owens for Chapel. He was going to try to get a little something going. And like Jacob said, great coverage. So, 140 to go, third quarter, clock rolling nonstop here at Victor Nipper Stadium in Parkers Chapel. And the Trojans, it'll all be on the line next week. I believe they got Woodlawn. And am I right? Got Woodlawn yes. to determine that fifth seed in the playoffs. Number 30 for Junction City now in the game, that's Daniel Cope. Also checking in, let's see. And I believe that is Sam Williams, number 20, is in the game. Both of them in linebacker. All right, here we go. Little give off tackle and really nowhere to go. And that's kind of been the theme here yes. for the last. Especially coming out of the second half, you got a bunch of you know new guys that hadn't seen the field yet tonight. And uh, 
Trojan offense really hasn't had anywhere to go. I'm not sure how many positive plays they actually have here in the fourth quarter. That would be one of them, but the, the previous drive, there was just nothing going for them. Nothing, nothing was working. I was watching a couple of first unit guys going in and out, and some of the folks may notice that. I know Coach Carpenter talked about a lot of times just to keep them loose, they'll run them in, run them out. You know, just kind of like, okay, they had not played a lot. You know, the game's been decided. We got another play here in just a couple yards to pick up, and as you can see, about four more guys checking in, and of course, hopefully, four coming out. And that was, should be, I'm going to go on out on a limb. I haven't been good yeah, at this this year. That yeah. should be the last play of the quarter. That should be it. Three seconds, two, one, and that's going to do it. The third quarter is in the books. And after three quarters here at Victor Nipper Stadium in Parker's Chapel, Arkansas, our score, Junction City 42. Parker's Chapel nothing, and the only suspense left is will it be a shutout? You know Coach Smith would oh, love definitely. that. definitely. And that's something – that's something, yeah, you want the win, but in the back of your mind, that's something you're like, you know, let's try to shut them out. You know, as, as, you know playing defense for the Dragons, uh, you know, during my high school career, that was always something we, we strive to do, you know. Not only not only try to just beat down your opponent, but keep them from getting in the end zone. Kind of a, kind of a goal we set week in and week out. And we get ready to start the fourth quarter. Why don't you do a little uh, banking info for us there. Tell us who yes. we need to go bank with. Uh, tired of the same old run around from your bank? Introducing Casasa, the free community power checking account where everyone wins from First Financial Bank. When you do things like use your debit card and receive e-statements, we reward you with cash. Refunds on ATM fees those other guys charge and great personal attention that proves we care. Do you Casasa? You should. Casasa is carried locally at First Financial Bank, a proud sponsor of Junction City, City Schools. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. All right. And while you're doing that, let me go ahead and get a couple more in for some of our sponsors here because we are very pleased to have these sponsors. And first thing first, Elevator Chemical, title sponsor of the Dragon Sports Network. Glad to have them on board. Also, Three Creeks Baptist Church, Three Creeks Youth Ministry, and STI Sims, Accident Injury Center, South Arkansas, and Hog Wild Pest Control. The fourth quarter now underway here at Victor Nipper Stadium. Do a shout out for us there, Mr. It, Jacob. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Shout out to uh, Miss Teresa Matochik again. She says she loves watching her boys on the Dragon Sports Network. All right. Fourth quarter, like I said, underway in Junction City. Same thing for the Trojans, really nowhere to go. It's now fourth down, they're punting it away, and Jarkel Brown won't even get a return. Oh, almost fumbled it away, but he recovers it. And the Dragons will go to work at about the 48-yard line of the Trojans first and 10. Let's see where they do mark it at. He kind of went for it trying to get the ball. So they mark it, let's see, the 47-yard line, that's where, okay, first and 10, Junction City has mostly the second unit in there. Keem Gibson, Sedarius Livingston, Chad Butler, your wide outs, Will Smith, the quarterback, and trying to get the number beside him there, and I believe it's that is going to be yes. 21, that's going to be Smith, also Devontae Smith, Will Smith, you want to take off with it, and he's got some running, oh, look out, Holy at cow. the 30, 25, 20. 15 down to the 10, out of bound. Will Smith. <laughs> Take just, it away, Jacob. Hey, just, add it, just add it to the list. I mean, we talk about this guy. Talk about this guy. Talk about this guy. He flashed it earlier on the extra point. It was a high snap, so he just caught his own number and took it. And then that run right there, uh, Johnny Football-esque, so to speak, maybe. Oh, man. I mean, he tucked it and made a couple of moves and then got, got to the outside. A big gain right there. A very Will nice Smith. run. And uh, looking like a bad boy on that play, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Uh, I'm trying to, every, uh, trying to throw in everything I can here. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what, like everybody's doing a highlight reel tonight. Yes, I mean, know? it's just, it's, uh, you know, take your turn. <laughs> and Mr. Smith did, and he's got the Dragons threatening again here early in the fourth quarter. 
All right, here's a give now. I believe that is going to be number 21. Woo! Devontae Smith, he takes a hard league and keeps going and is in yes, for the touchdown. Oh, a nice run by a Devontae Smith. Run. Yes, no doubt about it. You like to see this as we keep talking about the second unit guys are in. And if you're looking for a fall off, folks, if you're looking for – you know, there to be a decline in production, so to speak, or, or, or the style of play? No. Right. It's not going to happen because these guys practice against the first unit. They get the first unit ready, but it's it's not for naught. And we see it right there. Will Smith, big, huge run right there. And then uh, his counterpart in the backfield, Smith takes it in for the touchdown. That's right. And, you know, think about it. You're you're Will Smith and you're, you're running the uh, – you're running second unit offense or sometimes even what they call the third unit if you want to. And the extra point, let's see, do we get – yes, it's good. You, you go against Josh Armstrong. You go against uh, Taylor Mason on the line and Jamario Bell and Owens and them and the other Armstrong, Robert. Yes. You know, I say other oh, that shouldn't – you know, guys that they're doing their job doing it well, you practice against them. When you get in a game, like you said, there's not going to be no letdown. You're exactly. used to going against something you, hard here. I mean, you're going against the – Best team in the state. <laughs> there you go. And I want to once again touch on something that we were thrilled to hear today, and that's Kenneth, Mr. Kenneth Jackson. He did get the transplant. And the donor, you know, I want to touch on that again, what it means to be an organ donor. But, you know, someone had to die to give him that gift. Yes. And to that family, our heartfelt prayers go out. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a situation that's both thrilling and sad. Yes. And we're thrilled for Mr. Jackson and, of course, sad for the family of the donor. And uh, everyone that uh, knows the Jackson family involved in the Jones City community, you know, our heartfelt prayers go to the donor family. And hopefully everything will go well for Mr. Jackson. 7.20 to go in the game. And Parker's Chapel on the return, I believe that was Edwards. He picks up about uh, six, maybe five, six yards on the return. And Ch Parker's Chapel will go to work from the 33-yard line with almost seven minutes left in the game. Clock running nonstop now. And Coach Carpenter wanting to get this game over with and get back to J.C. and get ready for next week and wrap up the regular season. Dragons looking over the second unit defense here. We'll just get you some names here in a second. Mike Williams in there, Keem Gibson also. Here's a give now to, I believe that is gonna be. Not sure. Not sure, number. I can't get the number there. Here wrapped we go. Up, wrapped up immediately. I mean, he was hit before he could really get going good. That's number 12 for Parker's Chapel. And I do not have a number 12 on their roster. 42. 42. Okay, let me look here. Yes, Sean Van Hook Man, on that the carry. Was, that was Big Mike Smith. Uh, wrapping him up. Wrapping him up immediately. Second down. And that new Trojan quarterback will get his number in a minute. He's going to keep it and run. He got some good yards to pick up a first down. And that new quarterback is number five, Logan Harbor. And we talked about him in the pregame, one of the guys they're counting on. Logan is a, let's see, a sophomore. And, of course, like uh, Coach Housen told me today, that's the future. Yes. Want to yes. see him see you know, what he can do. As he, of course, we keep talking about it. But, you know, in games like this, when the other team realizes, that, you know, it's out of hand, they're also getting looks at guys, you know. Okay, it'll bring up a first, it gets the Trojans, they bring them up a first down at the 44 yard line as we approach uh, the 520 mark of the fourth quarter. Junction City got the second unit in now, and Coach Carmen loved to see them uh, shut things down. On the carry for the Trojans, number 42. That's Van Hook. Sam Williams in on the tackle. Also, I believe that was, uh, see if I can get that other number there, 34. For Junction City, and that's Mr. Mason Gorman. Vontae Avery also in, in the game now. Chad Butler, Lane Wood, Sailor Wilson out there on defense now. It's Big Mike, he's out there also. Second, let's call it a long six for the Trojans. Yes. Harbor pitches to Van Hook, kind of a loose yeah, pitch very, there. Yeah, and very. the Dragons own it immediately. Daniel Cope in there on the tackle. Also, Sam Williams wrapping him up. And Lane Wood. 
kind of a Holly Strong, Holly Strong pitched out ball right there. Almost left his running back out to dry as the Dragon defense was <laughs> once again sw swarming to the ball. You know, regardless of what unit's on the field, regardless of what position guys in, this as we've seen all year, this Dragon defense, just Dragon team in general, has a knack to just fly around. That goes back to the speed. That's right, and you, and you got uh, second, you know, I hate to say, but the second, third stringers in there, and they're flying to the ball. I mean, they're not holding back. All right, Harbor fakes the handoff, goes and throws, and it's going to be caught in a nice tackle. No doubt about it. Wow, Sailor Wilson on the tackle, and he had some – Harbor had some heavy, heavy pressure coming from Lane Wood. Yes, I did. mean, Wood was coming hard after him. And like to got him. And then Wilson wrapping up and bringing down the receiver, and it brings up fourth down. It's 3.30 left in the game. Of course, clock running nonstop. Junction City leading 49 to nothing. And Coach Carpenter and staff telling the second unit, and mostly also third unit, let's keep the shutout going. All right, deep pass, and it's going to be picked. Oh, oh, just, oh just I thought he dropped. had it, and he dropped yes, it. Did. Nice little arm right there by Mr. F Mr. Five. Uh, uh, number five, Logan Harbor. Logan yes, it Harbor. is. Nice, nice, nice throw. little ball right there. And, you know, you watch a quarterback like that, and you see what Coach Houndsden is talking about. I can build around this guy. Yes. You know, because he's going to lose. They're losing quite a bit, but the guys they got coming up, they feel confident in. And he feels like he can get something going. And, you know, he's going to make the playoffs, you hope. Yes. And, you know, it's a fifth seed, mm -hmm. and that's valuable experience there. No matter how far you go, whatever yeah, happens, to get in there and to get that. And when you got a quarterback like that to build around, that helps things. Helps a lot. All right, 2.30 to go. Clock running. The Dragons looking to run the clock out and get out of here. They, as I said before, will approve to 8-0 on the season. And... And conference play remain undefeated, and we got a dragon on the loose here, and that's Bravante Avery, and he's going to pick up about 15, 16, 17 nice yards carry. on that play. A nice run by Avery, and it gives the dragons a first down deep in Trojan territory. And, and runs like that, just the, the only word, it just depth comes to mind. I mean, just depth. So many guys carry the football. So many guys can can uh can catch the ball. And then we seen Will Smith earlier in the in the previous drive with that with that long run. I mean, just weapons everywhere. And and these guys, uh, well, you Avery is a junior, Smith a sophomore. So you got you know, future's always looking bright. Okay, Smith gives two. That's number twenty for the Dragons, and that is Sam Williams, and he's loose down the sideline, and. Pushed out at about the nine, I believe. I was, I was fixing to holler touchdown, but I was going to wait until I see a signal, but I believe you're right. He's going to be pushed out at about the nine yard. A nice run. Coach Carpenter subbing steadily here. 82 Williams checking back in. Josh Larry checks out. The Dragons, one minute now to go, and this one will be in the books. And they'll leave here tonight with a share of the 8AA conference title. The third time in school history that they've done it three in a row. And definitely something to be proud of, especially the AA conference. Here's Williams again. Darts it to the middle. Go Get ahead and push. pull the goal line. Got a push there. Yeah. Uh, let's see where they mark it. He's not in. The, he's not in. It's going to be close. 30 seconds left. And Coach Carpenter, I believe, just gives a signal. If we don't have to run the play, don't. I and believe that's what they won't said. have to. They won't have, they won't have to, and that's what he's saying. Don't run it. Guys are getting in the huddle. They break the huddle. Twelve seconds left, and that's what he's telling them. He's yeah, motioning, yeah. hold up. That's going to be it, folks. Yeah. Four seconds. Three, two, one. And one half of the eight AA conference title belongs to Junction City. City. They can wrap it up, Jacob, next week. What does it mean to claim at least to share that title, and more likely the whole title next week? Yeah, it's. I mean, you know, you accomplish one of the goals you set at the beginning at the beginning of the season. You, I mean, you you look at it. Granted, there's still a lot of football to be played, and you know we don't. 
I say we as in being a former Dragon. We don't sit out to win conference championships. We sit out to win the big prize in December. And it'll be something the guys will, you know, when they, you know, get get together in 10, 15 years. Hey, we won the conference championship back in, you know, 2013. But hopefully they can talk about winning the state title in 2013. It'll be nice to get the trophy, you know, I guess whenever they get them in either late December or January, you know. But still still bigger goals and bigger goals in mind. That's right. And your post-game show brought to you by the fine sponsors of the Dragon Sports Network, STI Sims, Accident and Injury Center of South Arkansas, Dr. Jed Frisbee. McDonald's Grocery, Junction City Pharmacy, Junction City Florist, Three Creeks Baptist Church, their youth ministry also at Three Creeks, uh, First Financial Bank, Hog Wild Pest Control, did I, STI Sims, I don't think I left anybody out, I hope I didn't, fine sponsors of the Dragon Sports Network, and of course our title sponsor, Eldorado Chemical, your post-game show brought to you by all these fine sponsors. Okay, 49 to nothing, got a shutout. Talk about the defense first, what you saw tonight overall after, now the game's over. Anything you might concern you, but also the high points, what you saw tonight. I wouldn't say concern. It was, once again, a solid victory all around for the Dragons. Uh, granted, when you look at film on Monday, there's always something to improve on because you go back to a former coach of mine, Mr. Mike Barrett, he has on his door at school, or he did when I was in high school, when you're through improving, you're through. Through. Great Lou Holtz said that, and and that, that's how that's how they need to take it. When you're through improving, you're through, and until your ultimate goal is in hand, then you know it's all for naught. But a good a good win, especially defensively. Kind of started out slow. Chapel was able to move the ball uh, there in their first couple of drives. You know they spread them out a little bit, and that that opens uh, running lanes, and especially with a guy like Tyson, you know, he heavy hard runner. Uh, like him, you know, he was able to find some some open areas where he could, you know, squeeze through. But the Dragons, you know, they got it together. And then after being in a hard situation down in the uh, north end zone, when the, the dropped punt snap, you know, they have to defend it from about 15 yards out. And then That's right. Jay Mitchell swipes one, takes it 99 to the house. That's huge for the defense and a very good win for the Dragons, especially defensively. And as he took it to the house, he ran right into the Dragon record book, the longest interception return on record in school history. Okay, you talked about the defense. Let's talk about the offense now. Uh, good performance all around, especially the, the balance we've seen. We first talk about Armstrong. Uh, you know, tackles, tackles, tackles. Well, that's all. We're, that's all we seem to be talking about. But the guy carried the ball well. Two runs that won't be recorded because of because of a hold in a clip. But ran the ball well. Welcome back, Mr. Dancy. <laughs> yes, I believe it was 116 yards in the first half and two scores. Holyfield with another great game, but it's it, but when you look at him, it's the things that won't be in the stat stat book that he continues to improve on week in and week out. Right. His, his poise in the pocket, his uh, not just on his first target, but looking to try to see what what my second receiver is doing, what my third receiver is doing, and uh, you know he's improving week in and week out. And then you look at the receivers, Bell, uh, Jarkel Brown, another big game, uh, Bo Hux especially. It's just just another, just another, just another day for Dragon football. Another balanced, balanced win offensively. Another day at the office for That's Coach Harper. That's it. Who continues to move up the win record book? Uh, I believe this is number two oh nine. He's now like two or three away from taking another spot on the all-time wins list. Twenty-two games in a row, conference twenty-two overall. Dragons keep on rolling. Now I'm going to throw this question at you, and you may think, and, and you may think, well, wait a minute, where's he coming from on this? But I think you know what I mean. Is this team ready for the playoffs? I think they are. Uh, it, a lot of that's going to depend on how they handle these next couple of weeks. You know, they do have a game against Hermitage uh, coming up next week, and uh, you know they will have a couple of weeks off before they begin the playoffs. But uh, from what I've seen tonight, I, I think they are ready for the playoffs. Uh, very good defensive effort. And the offense seems to be clicking. Yeah, there's mental mistakes. That's going to happen. But you just got to get that. Got to get that fixed and work out. And uh, I think as a as a football player, when when, when moments like the playoffs come, it, it's almost a different mentality. It's still football. It's still you still. You're still playing 100 yards. Nothing's changed, but it's it's almost as if you're you're, you're playing with a different mentality. And I, yeah, this bunch will be ready. Yeah, defending state champions. They got a lot to play for. Well, that's when you know that time of the year. You're talking about when you get out to Samson Night and pack it because uh, you're either moving on or going home. You're right. Depends yes, on sir. what you do. In 2008, uh, 
y'all were in the same position. You knew you were going to win the conference. You had Hampton coming up and, and not being mean or nothing, but it was a pick em score. Yeah. And a lot of people are going to say, and let me just inject this real quick, but a lot of people are going to say, okay, next week's a pick em score, big deal. Folks, you need to come out and support this team. If you've got nothing yes. going on, come on out. Enjoy a nice night at uh, Paul H. Muse. Bring some friends, reminisce, watch the Dragons, watch this team, hopefully wrap up the conference title outright, finish the season undefeated. That's not the regular season undefeated. That's not happened, but uh, as far as we know, maybe four times in school history, and one of those times was back when Hitler was trying to rule the world. So, you know, this is something special to see. Come out, check them out next week. But in 2008, you and your teammates had to face an opponent you knew he was going to beat, and then you was going to have a bye and then a second-round opponent that is kind of scary. It was dirt. Mm-hmm. How did y'all handle it? Uh, you, have to, you have to handle it. You have to handle it each week differently. You, you know going in that your your opponent may not be – you know it's not probably going to be in the playoffs. They, they won't be. But it's still football. It's still – there's nothing changed. Yes, the opponent's better. But as I was saying, that playoff mentality hits. What you did in the regular season doesn't matter. Because, yes, you're ranked. Yes, you may have to travel. Yes, this team may not have to travel. But it's all – you know, it's winner take all. So – I think I think this team, from what I've seen tonight, what I've seen throughout the year, that they're they're ready for it. They're ready for the challenge. Next week, as I mentioned, got the Hermitage Hermits. After that, it'll be a uh, it'll be an open week because of the Norfolk game, and then a bye week, and then more than likely the Gurdon Go Devils. One final question: Any area? that the coaches are going to look at and say, we've got to get better in. Is there any area that still – and I, I, I'll tell you one that I was watching tonight very closely because once we knew we had the game in hand and I was trying to keep a close eye on it. Going into the season, the both sides of the ball on the line, very young. And Coach Carpenter talked about, you know, it's just the reverse from last year when we had a very veteran line and young skilled players that we need to bring along slowly. Well, this year you're depending on the skilled players, and they're very capable to do it. They've proven yes. it all year yes. long of making that run where they wasn't quite the blocks they needed and doing what they need to do when Simons didn't quite get completed. But tonight, going against a Parker's Chapel team, very big on both sides of the ball, very big line. At first, you know, we mentioned, hey, they're having a little trouble handling that beef. Mm-hmm. And then as the game, continued on that offseason program came into play and they handled it. I was very pleased to see our both sides of the ball, the line step up. Any area you were looking at that you go, need a little more work on it before we hit the playoffs. Well, well to hint on that, that's what, that's what the battles won. It's won in the trenches and you like to see that and this was you know, actually, a really good test for for both sides of the ball, as far as the as far as the lines with this uh, Chapel offensive line and defensive line, very very big guys. You'll see that in Bearden, you'll see that in Rising, who who is we who we've mentioned could be semifinal opponents. That's right. Gurdon always has some size, so I mean it's very good for them to see, especially late in the season rather than early, and then you you kind of play guys more similar to your size, but to see this is really really good. But as far as an area to improve on uh, physically, they're, they're there. They have it physically. Uh, one thing that concerns me, I'd have to say, is probably just the mental aspect of the game. Right. And, and a lot of that uh, will play into effect coming, as we mentioned, these next weeks when they have Hermitage and then two buys before the playoffs. Not only your mental aspect of how you handle the game leading up to it and that all that off time, but also during the game. You know, we see a couple of big runs by Armstrong get called back, holding penalty, and then probably an unnecessary – all clips are unnecessary, but where a guy's not in, even in, in position to make the make the tackle, guy gets clipped. You know, just it's the small things. That's the stuff you, you really need to work on. And I think, you know, as time progresses, especially during these off weeks, that, you know, they'll, they'll have more of a mental focus and also be able to rest some guys, you know, that may be banged up. You know, Dancy had a really good night, but – you know he'll have he'll have some uh, more time to you know get back to full health. And you can see a little bit of the rust on there. But as you said, welcome back, Mr. Dancy, and he came out. Well, nice coming out party. You know he went and added a couple more clips to the highlight reel. <laughs> Well, next week, I don't believe you'll be able to join me. You'll be getting ready for homecoming. And let me say this, congratulations. I believe the ring ceremony for the baseball team. Uh, Y'all get your rings uh, next Saturday uh, after the OBU game. Yes. Still playing for some postseason action. Yes. And hopefully uh, that will happen. Hopefully so. A lot of football left. But you'll be back in time for the... 
playoffs. Playoffs, yeah. I said, yeah, I set yeah. you up for playoffs. Jim Moore again. <laughs> Are you kidding hey, me? You me, missed man. it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lane Pumphrey, and I uh, have Jacob here tonight. Mr. Jacob Pumphrey with us on the camera. Guy done an outstanding job. Mr. Derek Watts. Ricky the Rev Watts, our stat man over there in the corner. Miss Jessica Hammett joined us tonight and helped us out here handing papers and keeping us calm while we were looking for papers. And back at the studio, Miss Melissa Pumphrey is always outstanding job. Some difficulties tonight with some things, but holding the fort down and doing a great job, and we appreciate that greatly. And I have a big shout out to Mr. Robbie Lowe for helping here, keeping the Dragon Sports Network trucking alone next week we got the hermits and after that get ready for the playoffs have to have fun this weekend folks take care we'll see you for the hermitage game good night